Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Elamba Television tonight. Tonight, we are going to discuss a very important topic about the Igbos in Northern Nigeria. Last week, we had a news that a new tribe has emerged. A group of Igbos named themselves Northern Igbos. The group, led, they were called Igbo Delegate Assembly. Igbo Delegate Assembly comprises of all the Igbo associations in the 19 Northern states. They visited the Cardinal State Governor and announced that they are now Northern Igbos and do not support the agitation, the, secession, the secessionist agitation in Southeastern Nigeria. Two days after that, Igbo Delegate Assembly issued another statement calling on the federal government to tackle the security situation in the country. They announced their support for President Muhammad Buhari and again reiterated that they do not support the Biafra secessionist agenda. Not long after that, on Friday, Igbo Delegates Assembly and some Igbo traditional leaders again disowned IPOB saying they do not support the agitation for secession. So I think this raises some pertinent issues that we are going to discuss tonight. So let me not preempt what our discussants will say, but let me introduce them. We have tonight eight very knowledgeable people on the question, Comrade Sani Said Artukri. I don't know whether Sani is here yet. He's from Kaduna State. We have Dr. Law Before from Anambra State. We have Dr. Ahmad Saju from Adamawa State. We have FCC Jones Omaswanya from Imwe State. We have Mr. Pamyad Dagiat from Plastic State. Thank you State. for welcoming me. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, Dr. Law, before you are here, thank you very much. We have Pamia Dagiat from Plato State, Mr. Marcel Ngobuhei from Imu State, Mazi Uchemefo, you are welcome, from Anambra State. And last but not least, Mr. Thank Mohammed Ali Baba. Ali Baba, do we call you Al Haji from Niger State? So we will allow our discussants to use three to five minutes to discuss this topic. Northern Ibu is on the question of indigenous indigenous policy in Nigeria. Northern Ibu is on the indigenous ship question in Nigeria. Let's start from Sunny if here. If not, we hear from Dr. Law Mefo and the indigenous ship question in Nigeria. Dr. Mefo. Yeah, well, uh, um, my brother, Dan, first, I must, I must thank you for the great job you're doing and um, the great enlightenment program that they have launched over the months and years, print, electronic, I thank you. Then coming to the issue um, at the moment that has to do with the Igbos uh, in Northern Nigeria, some of them, not the majority of them, just some of them, I must say, saying they, that they now want to be considered as indigenous of the North. It's um, a, a, a rather an unfortunate one because um, I say so because I think they are reacting out of fear, apprehension, because the country um, does not uh, accommodate them anymore. And they are now doing all they can to be able to even ensure their own survival. I believe that their reaction is stemming from the actions of the president of the country, who has not shown enough capacity in terms of a really taking care of all sections of the country. And that is why over 10 million Igbos in Northern Nigeria are feeling stranded. They are feeling stranded 
And they believe that if they say they now belong to the north, then are now no northerners of a southeast extraction or southeast ancestry that that would guarantee their security. That's what this whole thing is all about. But I tell you that their action cannot really work. You see, there is a group that just emerged. The name of the group is a, a, a coalition, coalition of Northern groups. That's the name of the group. One, a Suleiman spoke on their behalf and attacked these uh, evils who now want to be seen as uh, Northerners. And then uh, he called them a security threat. And that's precisely what I expected from the core north. They don't need to claim to be northerners because they are not. You see, you can become a citizen of a place by law or by naturalization. Whichever process you choose, there must be a procedure. What they have talked about now, what they have chosen to be, and they want Nigerians to accept that they are, is not provided for in any of our laws. You know, so it's not possible for them to become, for merely wishing that they want to become. No, they are Igbos, and Igbos, they must remain. They are not northerners. They are not House of Fulanis. They are Igbos. In the Southeast, we have houses, we have Fulanis, we have Yorubas. They have no claim to be Igbos of a Yoruba or Hausa ancestry. So their own position is absurd. And I feel a bit disappointed with that. You know, we need to really correct something here. Let them know that it is not possible for them to become Northerners of Igbo ancestry. It's not guaranteed by law. It is not guaranteed by tradition of the, of the North. It is not even guaranteed by Igbo tradition. Let me tell you, any of them that dies in the North and they know it, the person must be brought back to Igbo land to be buried. That has been the tradition. It will not change because we have a security threat because we have a president that really doesn't uh, care about protecting all sections of the country. That is where I want to rest my case. We thank you very much, Dr. Lome, for Comrade Sunny Said. You are with us now. Can you give a three to five minute presentation on the topic? Yes, I've unmuted myself. Go ahead, uh, can you repeat uh, the, the last statement you made? All right. In my introduction, I mentioned about a group called Igbo Delegates Assembly. I, I think you remember I sent you the link, what they said. They are now Northern Igbos, and they do not support the agitation for secession. They declare support for Muhammad Buhari and saying that they, the Igbos in the 19 northern states of the country, should now be considered as northern Igbos and not southern Igbos. What do you think? Can you do three to five minute presentation, please? OK. Uh, uh, I must thank you very much for uh, this wonderful opportunity given to me. And I will commend your effort for organizing this webinar for us to engage ourselves and enlighten ourselves of issues uh, that we are technically not understood. You see, myself, uh, I believe that Igbos are the true Nigerians. This is because Igbos are the most widely dispersed ethnic group in Nigeria. There is no any place, any state, any locality in the whole of Nigeria 
that you go and you will not find an Igbo person there. Legitimately doing, doing conduct, conducting his business activities. Just because of this, this makes me believe that the Igbo people are the true Nigerians we have. Now, uh, based on this, you will find you will find out that there are evils in certain parts of the north that even their parents or grandparents were born and brought up in uh, in in the north. So, most of here, let me cite an example with Kano State. There is a place called Sabungiri. It is a local government, and that local government is dominated by Igbo people. It is a business hub. If you go there, you find out most of the shops there are owned and operated by Igbo people. Now, what does the constitution say about indigenship? One can become an indigent of a locality if if and only if his parents or grandparents are from that locality, or the officials of that locality, be it uh, the district head or the local government chairman, certify that person as an indigent of that locality. He might be credited, you know, that identity. So I see no reason why someone who whom his parents are born and brought up in a particular locality, cannot claim indigenship of that locality. He can. There are a lot of Igbos that are even more of Northerners than the Northerners themselves. So why cannot be this? Why why can't these people be give, cannot be given a sense of belonging? Whomever believes in in a, 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 a true Nigeria, he should also believe in that. Why is it not that a Hausa man, that his parents were born and brought up in Enugu, and he, he was also born and brought up in Enugu, his children are also born and brought up in, why can't he claim to be an indigent of that locality? Why? I see no reason for that. Now, there is, uh, let me cite example with uh, Eze Joseph Emmanuel of Plateau State. They call him Eze of the Igbo community in Plateau State. Even his father, father was born and brought up in Plateau State. And now he is the Eze of Igbo community in Plateau State. So why he has a very gigantic palace, a mansion there. He has so many business activities. Then why should someone from the north just wake up one day and tell him to evacuate and leave because he does not belong there. While he is a Nigerian. Now, Dr. Lome for uh, quote the coalition of Northern Nigeria. Let me just dissect into that a little bit because I am the Northwest Secretary of the coalition of Northern groups. The reason for that quick notice he cited was that was because of uh, the lives and properties of the Northerners can no longer be guaranteed in the Southeast. That was the major reason for that quick notice, the ultimatum given, which was 90 days. And I was even part, if you Google the pictures, you will see me there. But we now had to withdraw that statement due to some reasons. You are supposed to read the reasons for withdrawal of that statement and also cite them here. He also called that uh, Igbos, if they die, they were not buried here. I know a massive grave that is owned by the Christian here, even in my locality, area where I reside in Musasa, where the oldest church is. If, if, if whenever an Igbo person die, if he so wish, he can be buried. In that in that uh, burial ground, so for, for me, I think the issue of northern uh, northern was they exist and they operate, and no one can just wake up one day and tell them to leave. As far as Nigeria is concerned, 
Thank you. Sorry, before I call on the next speaker, Comrade Sani Said, we want to yes, confirm this point with you. You said you are a member of that Northern Coalition that issued that put notice to Ibos to vacate Northern Nigeria. Can you give us briefly, just briefly, in one minute, the reasons for the issuance of that quit notice and why you withdrew the quit okay. notice? Okay, very good. You see, the reasons are many. But to me, norms and value cannot easily do without. But here in the North, we experience a, a drastic change in our values. And when we go back to the books, we now realize that the evils at, uh, uh, at then were part of the problem. For instance, they sell counterfeit drugs. And even up to now, it still exists. More so, the lives and properties of other northerners there cannot be guaranteed due to the uh, agitations by IPOP and uh, MASOP. Our lives were not guaranteed there. Second, uh, thirdly, a typical northerner cannot own any meaningful, you know, uh, business in the southeast, and it happens up to now. You cannot make mention of any prominent northerner that owns business worth. 20 million in the entire Southeast. Many, so our people there in the Southeast are deprived of their right to operate as they deem, they deem it fit. So to mention uh, but a few, these are just some of the reasons. The okay, now UK, why did you withdraw the quit notice? Let's briefly again, why did you withdraw the quit notice? Good. Uh, we came to realize that the unity of Nigeria is not negotiable at that time. When we ask the Igbo people to leave the North, we, are, we realize that we are going to cause war because of the statement I made earlier that there are some evils that do not even own land in their hometown, but they own a lot of mansions here in the north. So when you tell them to leave, where will they go to? In fact, they even prefer to die here than to go back there. All right. We the thank you very much. Thank you very much. Governors, the governors of the northern states, okay. including Governor Nasir Rufai, intervene and come the nerves of northern youth that they shouldn't that that wasn't the way to act we should be very diplomatic in our approach there are so many ways we we can follow to curb such menace so we had we had to now come back to our senses and withdraw the quick notice for peace to reign that's it thank you all right, we thank you very much. Our next speaker will be um, FCC Jones. No, are you there? Sorry. 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 Okay, Ali Baba, do you want to speak now? Uh, uh, can I? Okay. No, I'm just in Sorry. Mr. Muhammad Ali Baba, you are saying something? Hey, I said I'm back. I said why? All right, it's okay. Let's My call on FCC. I'm just informing you I'm back. 
Oh, okay, that, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for coming back. Let's call on FCC Jones to address the, to make his own presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Elomba. And uh, good evening to uh, my fellow discussants. I think I, I want to start by saying that there is nothing morally, legally, politically, or even spiritually wrong with um, the decision some of these people have taken to decide to be addressed or recognized as um, Northern Igbos. I, one of, why this is controversial or why this is contentious is because of our understanding of indigenship in Nigeria. I think our understanding of indigenship in Nigeria is flawed on its own because we tend to think that before you can enjoy the rights of citizenship in any community, you must have been born there or you must belong there. But the truth of the matter is that those who studied history or those who uh, we want to educate us, those whose field of study covered the areas of history, migrations and all that, will tell you that there is nobody there is no tribe in the world that sprouted from where they currently reside. Every community, every society is a product of migration. That is my understanding. I do not, uh, if, we, if we go back to the Bible, maybe the only people who would be said to have, uh, to have right or to be indigenous by our understanding of indigenship are those who tried to build the Tower of Babel in the Bible story where people, where some people said, okay, we do not want to go our different ways. Let us build a, a Tower of Babel so that we can continue to be here forever. And God, in his wisdom, uh, I do not know why he decided to scatter them and uh, give, give them different languages. And they began to migrate. So, um, for instance, uh, the people we are called today as Northerners are not actually Northerners, they were not born there. The parents of Usman Damfodio was not a Northerner, a Northern Nigerian. They came from somewhere. And there are a lot of people like that. The people who are from Onewi today or who claim indigenship of Onewi today may not actually, if you trust them, that is why we have history, we say this person Sfada came at so-so time. Where did they come from? We feel comfortable when our brothers migrate to the United Kingdom of America, uh, of uh, the United Kingdom, and are indigenous of that place, enjoy the rights. We have our brothers who are elected officials in Poland, in the United States of America, in the UK, in Norway, <laughs> wherever you call it. And we feel happy about that. But we are complaining, we are feeling badly done, we feel it is not right for some of our brothers to decide to take up indigenship, take up citizenship in northern Nigeria. For instance, I come from Imo State, my parents come from Imo State, I can decide today that I no longer want to come from Imo State, I want to come from the S city. And I become an indigenous of the S city and already, we must tell some truth to power. There are, if you come to the FCT, for instance, there are a few local government areas in the six uh, local governments of FCT where you do not have an Igbo man serving as either the chairman of that local government or this vice chairman. If you go to Lagos State, for instance, you find Igbos holding elective positions in Lagos State. If you go to, to some places, in, there are people who we are born in Kano, there are Igbos who, who were born in Kano who do not even know a word in Igbo language. So how do you expect such people to come down to the Southeast because their parents were from the Southeast and begin to learn a new language? Because for them, it is going to be like learning something new, learning a fresh language, learning a fresh culture. While they have a place where they come from, where they originally come from, where they are uh, better inclined to their culture and what have you. So this development to me is a welcome development. It helps in our nation building efforts. It helps in unifying Nigeria because um, maybe in the next uh, 200 years, we may have Igbo's dominating Kano state. 
We may have Igbos becoming the owners of Kano State. We may have people, we may have a mixture of Igbo language and Hausa language, and they, there will be a new tribe altogether in other parts of the North. So, and I also think uh, for those who argue that um, the Igbos do not allow Northerners to do business as much as they would want to in the Southeast, I do not think that is completely correct. It could be as a result of people's culture, people's understanding of um, investment. The, it is wrong to say that uh, there are no Northerners who own up to a business of up to 20 million naira in the East. That's not wrong. Um, uh, there are many of them who own such businesses, but may, they may not be comfortable, maybe because of their own lifestyle, maybe because of their culture, to invest, to build houses like the Igbos would want to build houses wherever they go to, like own properties wherever they go to. That doesn't mean that the Igbos do not allow them to do what they have to do wherever they go to. Also, I think our constitution, I do not, I'm not a lawyer, but I think our constitution permits people who have lived in a particular area for a given, up to a given period of time to contest election in that area, to vote in that area. So, and once our constitution allows you to own properties, you can decide to, um, um, what do I call it, to uh, set your base in that area and have your children there. And there's nobody who is saying that uh, this, even though we have a culture of wanting to go home, wherever we die, or we should be taking our remains, should be taken to our, uh, where our parents tell us we came from. But there are also people who could decide not to be taken home. Somebody like me can decide that when I die, I, should be, uh, uh, I shouldn't be taken home. There are, it depends on the individuals involved. So I, I think this uh, development, this action by our evil brothers in the North should be encouraged. They can't decide to be Igbos from wherever they are, and this is very commendable. It's legally understandable. It is morally perfect. It is nationalistic. It is politically wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you very much, ACC Jones. Mazi before. Let's, can, you, can we hear from you at this point, if you can unmute yourself, sir? Right, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Elomba, for uh, having me. And I also want to thank all of the panelists here who have contributed and those who are yet to contribute. Um, what I can say at this particular point in time, um, and I hope I will have um, opportunity to say more, is very simple. Why don't you, you know, tie to this discussion the unworkability of the Nigerian state? Because I see a number of uh, brothers here and friends here struggling to you know justify why some people why some people living in Nigeria should feel confident enough to answer whatever they want to answer and why you know others should be entitled to accept it. The truth about it is that the Nigerian state is built on a very faulty foundation. And let us be, you know, true to ourselves. We all know within ourselves that Nigeria is not working and it's not going to work. There is nothing like indigenship in Nigeria. No matter how hard you try to warm yourself into the hearts of people from Northern Nigeria or people from Southern Nigeria, you can never be accepted. That is the truth about it. And then coming to people who are saying that they are now Igbos of Northern Nigeria. The first thing to ask them is to, for them to define what their interest is and whether any of them was born in Northern Nigeria. And I give it to them. Everybody has freedom of choice. If any of them is born in Northern Nigeria or their parents, were born in Northern Nigeria. They are entitled to 
change their names to the names that are synonymous with Northern Knights, where, or to claim that they are Northerners rather than desecrating the identity of Igbo people. It is unacceptable for any Igbo man who has been living in different parts of Nigeria and more importantly in northern part of Nigeria to all of a sudden wake up and begin to try to romanticize and you know experimentalize with certain non-existent ideology that is already failed before they started it. It is unacceptable. It is unable, it is unworkable, and they know it. Some of these people doing this are either having economic interests or political interests. And it has nothing to do with the Igbo identity. They are not true to themselves. There is no northerner that will, for instance, you know, boldly claim that he is now a northerner of uh, Eastern extraction or something like that. So let us not even try to defend the indefensible. Nigeria is not a state or a country where the rule of law applies. And we all know it. A lot of injustice have been meted out to people from different parts of that union unworkable union called Nigeria. More importantly, the people from the East living in the North. So let us not pretend that Nigeria is working. We should first of all, admit that there is a problem. And once we admit and identify the problem, we begin to provide a solution to that particular problem. So a lot of us are struggling to try to justify what in essence is unjustifiable and nature abhors a vacuum and if you try to try i mean if you try to continue to argue you know to make nigeria what it is not nigeria will continue to defy you nigeria defies solution nigeria is an abomination unto mankind Nigeria is a crime against humanity and more importantly and specifically against the indigenous population long lumped in that you know, contraption. So let us not pretend, let us be free, let us be frank, let us talk to ourselves you know, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very conscientious and honest manner. And uh, some of uh, the panelists here are saying that uh, Northerners, uh, they don't own businesses in the, in, the, in, the, in the East or in the South as the case may be. It is because they don't want to. And in the first place, they don't believe that they are from that particular part of Nigeria. They know right from the outset that they don't belong where they are doing business. And so that is why they don't invest in Igbo land in the East or in the South as the case may be. So let us not deceive ourselves. Let us tell ourselves the truth. Nigeria is unfolding. The issues hidden before or behind Nigeria is unfolding before everyone. It's unraveling. And um, yes, let us be frank here. Well, thank you. Uh, you. Before. Yeah, we we'll still, I'm sure we you will still stay behind to take some questions on your presentation. Let's call on Mohammed Alebaba to uh, speak for us three to five minutes. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Yeah, go on. Hello, yeah. Thank you for, for having me. It's a, it's a good opportunity for us to adjust uh, to deliberate. On topic of uh, Northern Eagles. You see, personally, first, I, I, you as a possibility generally, and uh, it totally compounds me, especially from the beneficiaries. You have people here who 
when their wives are near town, they will ship them to the US. And suddenly after the, the child that had maybe was conceived seven to nine, eight months here and in his ninth month arrived US and is given birth to, he becomes a US citizen. And then of course we've seen how, because of that kind of arrangement, a second, is it a second generation African, so to say, by virtue of having a mother from US became a US president. So generally, such kind of things fascinates me because it's it's one of the critical, uh, I think, uh, you know, attractions of the US, the universality of human beings. That no human being has a choice in which tribe or what part of the world he's given birth to. Of course, uh, <laughs> Maybe these ones that are deliberately go and give birth in the US may be exception, but even the child has no, no role in that determination. So it confounds me that it's interesting that some of those that are most basic for us here in ethnic identity are some of those that are so, and I feel personally that the greatest you know, lives that human beings lived, particularly in this uh, in Nigeria. But it's also been an instrument that the elites have used to keep the masses permanently divided and on each other's throats while they continue to exploit and, you know, oppress them. You know, in the, I, used to, I used to recall during the crisis of June 12th, I, most of the time I was in Lagos that time. And then when people would be so, so, so furious, even, up to fisticuffs about the June 12 crisis that time. I used to remind them that African Ocean Lines, Habib Bank, were still jointly owned by both Abiola and Adwa. And that if the crisis was serious, they would their business. So I think it's really a disservice to this country for people to continue to highlight and that people have no role whatsoever in determining where they come from. The last speaker was saying we are living a lie by insisting that some people could be northern Igbos. I mean, if Igbo land was really that the all and end all of the, of life or Igbo ness, why are they in the north in the first place? Why are they in the north? So this of declaring themselves no, then it almost coming a bit uh, late because it's said to be absent. Those, those toxic agi agitators of the Ipo um, Masob have been allowed such a free reign that they are able to indoctrinate and you know, brainwash these uh, street uh, kids that know nothing and then they are into self-destruction at the moment. So the more this kind of speaking, of course, the, be the better. But I think they will, apart from speaking and acting, I think some of the shortcomings of this kind of arrangement is for procal, you know, the, the guy that said they issued that, uh, what do you call it, which order to, I guess, uh, it was in the feeling that this accommodating and welcoming other parts of the country is not equally reciprocated in the, on the Igbo, Igbo side. And these are some of the things that brings agitation. But I think life does not begin and end in primordial allegiance or ethnicity, which nobody has a role in the time. Life generally, and every group, every sociological group is comprised of the good, the bad, and the ugly. So we need to recognize persons first as human beings and then two for and what the, you know, painting, uh, you know, of their compatriots, just simply the, the same city. So I think it's a welcome thing for us to start identifying ourselves with this uh, country. They, of course, a lot of them have been here. They, they have actually nowhere to go, and it's already been established. One of the videos I like sharing regularly was one of the interventions that Professor Jerry Gana made recently. He said there are about 14 million Igbos in the North and maybe twice that number of Yorubas in the North. So this issue of secessionist agitation, will be, where would these people go? And well, I mean, 
Where is the, particularly when the populist would have out is in the event of the that hallucinatory uh, cessation happen? And where, where, where would they be accommodated? And would they abandon their business and, 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 and their families here? Because if, let's assume, the elderly ones were not born in the North, the, most of their children are actually born here. Would they agree to follow them? So those kind of agitation, I think we need to speak more, more and more, those uh, leaders are affected. Because even in the event, in the event of the so-called referendum, people are talking about, Those that are entitled to part outside their own clip of separation, the challenges of secession. And there are still elderly ones that also can recall the challenges of war that, uh, that uh, was fought, uh, I mean, the civil war that uh, had come and passed. So, uh, we need to be more real. Life, there's ethnicity or sentiments, because if that is what majority of those that pretend to be supporting sensation or agitation. So, so if uh, they, they are on enclave or, or where they, my, they are originated from, who satisfy their yearnings in life, why are they why are they outside? Why don't they remain there? Thank you. So I think uh, by and large, uh, that is a welcome development, but they need to not only speak more, but extend this kind of message Back, back home because life is far more than tribe and ethnicity. Life is lived by the living. And of course, you only, and then home is made where you find it or you make your home where you are comfortable. And these guys have been here. They have businesses here. They have associates, they have relations here. But the only snag I've realized and which I often advise some of my, my work, Well, thank you. And then, um, them on the even where they do, they are mostly the issues. Now, Mohammed is joining from, I think, uh, Bida. So the network there is not the best, but we still manage to hear most of the things you said, and we still manage to understand the point you are trying to make. I hope I'm still right that you are still in Bida at the moment. So thank no, you. Sorry, I'm back in. I'm back in Abuja. Ah, uh, so why is Abuja Network behaving like this now? Yes, where well, my locations. I'm also surprised. At times I don't hear other. Yeah, but we see anyway. We hear. We, we heard you, and uh, we made. Uh, yes. We understand the points you made, even though at some point it tends to break up. But the point came very well across. Thank you very much. We still have two more um, discussions, panelists, before we take questions from the members of the audience. So let's hear from um, Pam, please. Uh, okay. Uh, thank Pam you, Dan. Yes. So I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. You, you are joining please. from Plateau State, I guess. Yes, from yes. Plateau. All right. Uh, in the first instance, may I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be part of the discussion. Uh, in my own case, I would like to follow it differently. Uh, the topic itself talks about Northern Igbos. Northern on its own term is a locational description, while Igbos describe a tribe. Now, if we look at uh, dictionary definition of tribe, it is a traditional uh, society that consists of communities that are linked by social, economic, or religious or blood ties. In that case, while indigenous is a person, animal, or plant that is native to a region. Now, when you're talking about tribe, it's all about social interaction. But when you're talking of indigenous, there is a direct link to land. And I think that is where the crux of the issues is. Because an indigenous person, apart from being born in a particular location, there must be a beyond recognition history of time link to that particular geographical location. Now, if that is the description, then indigenous is the status of being a native. And if you look at that vis-a-vis -vis our constitution, the constitution is very, very, very clear 
about the status, especially if you look at section 25, 26, 27 of the Nigerian constitution, it accords citizens a status in Nigeria. The implication here is that as a citizen, you have the right to live anywhere. But the same constitution is now saying that for a government to be representative, the, gov the, the governor or the president will appoint commissioners or ministers that is indigenous to the state. So in that in, in, in emphasis, it's clear that regardless of where you live, the indigenization issue is a land attachment variable. If it is true that it's a land attachment variable, then it's not practicable for the Igbos whose land locational uh, definition is clear to now say, okay, they are now in the, they are in the north. A northern region is a different locational description. We are going to create a scenario where it's going to be difficult to practicalize. I've listened to my co-discussant. Um, there is a difference between practicality and ideality in idealism. In idealistically, yes, what it is, it would have been good for an Igbo man living here in the north to now say, yes, he's now a northern Igbo. But in the practicality of it, everybody wants to be represented in the government because here in our African uh, scenario, the government seems to be the deciding factor of our sustainability in terms of uh, social welfare. So everybody wants to be part of that cake. So why will I, why will we in our normal reasoning as a black man, somebody who we know is not indigenous here, and we know that this position has some indigenous element or a, an indigenous representation. Now you now have an indigenous Igbo from the East, and then you now have an indigenous Igbo from the North. Then what happened to other ethnic nationality? Because of the way we run our system here, it becomes very impracticable to now have what you call the Northern Igbo. But in the North, there are Igbos which, who are indigenous. If you go to in Suka or somewhere close to uh, around the Benue axis in the border area, they are Igbos, but they are within the Northern geographical space. Yes, that is understandable. In practical sense, let me give you an instance of my own community here. The Fulanese are part of our, uh, the, the electoral college of our traditional council. We try even as much as we try to now say, okay, we are having them to be indigenous to us. It's not even practicable because they still use their names, Fulani names. They are not even using our names. So that issue is difficult and I don't see it happening. The only issue is that we have a problem with this country. And the problem is the way we de define our polity. Our polity is such so toxic that ethnicity is used as the line of mobilization for political uh, positioning. And that has been the crux of the issue. But for, when we leave our space here in Nigeria to go out, in reality, it is the person and the choice of the person that determines that Thank you. I hope you'll join back later on. Now that your network says you should have a break. I hope and you don't mind. Where he, he becomes uh, an indigenous. Okay. Just rounding up, this okay. is just an idealistic approach. I don't see it happening. So that is my own submission for now. All right. Well, thank you. I hope you will stay to take questions on your submissions. Finally, but not definitely not the least, Marcel, please, can you make your three to five minutes presentation? And then we take further comments from the discussion space on what they have heard from other speakers. Uh, Marcel, please. Okay, um, Dan, thanks so much. Um, 
I have the benefit of having listening to ev everyone. So I was thinking whether they had changed my mind about, <laughs> about what I think it is. But um, Dr. Law Mefo had given the legal perspective of it. And um, I just saw an a, um, article written in Punch as at 8th of March, 2020, where um, Senate was considering making a law that once you are 10 years in a particular place, that um, you could be an indigenous. Now, from March 2020 to June 2021, I do not think there has been any constitution that has been reviewed and made into law. I'm, 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 I'm not sure about that. Okay, so as it, as, it, as it stands now, the indigenous question means that you have to have a natural um, emanation from that particular zone. And there's a process, you have to get a letter from your local government and, and all those for them to confirm your indigenous. I mean, that is one. So legally, I do not think that works there's nothing like not able in legal terms if if you form an association you can call your association anything okay so if you call it an association then fine because maybe they have just created a platform in which to engage government and it's understandable that that platform for engagement is to ensure that what happened in the past does not repeat itself especially in, in 1940 something and then in 1960 and then between around that 1980 something to 1999 um, I was in Kanu. I lived in Kanu in Sabongari, and then um, I heard the stories of what happened, and I witnessed some, you know, to some extent. So maybe they have just taken a way to want to preempt that. Okay, when trouble comes out, please don't treat us like we are from your side. We are now part of you. Okay, that is what I'm thinking in that angle. Now the next thing I want to address is even those other minority tribes that are indigenous to the north how are they being treated because again when you say you want to join a family you need to ask yourself the members of the family how are the members of the family currently being treated if you look at the political appointment and positions the minorities are being pushed by side you know so the fulani you know at um at the house or whatever the the whenever there's a federal appointment or there's anything they have a way of bringing people that are not of those minority thing i had I have had a lot of minority personalities complain, and I have also witnessed some where there was a clear-cut competency from a minority in the north. I think um, maybe some some from Benway, and then by political imagination, they were not given permission. It was given to to, to 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 someone else, which was seen as the core north. So even within the north, there is this segregation of the people that see themselves as core north, and others are just peripherals, and most often they are being used as tools. You know. So if you understand how they are treating the people within their zone and you now want to join, <laughs> well, that is for that is your own part, okay? Now, the last point I want to address is, um, somebody said the Northerners does not have any business of 20 million. I know Dangote has invested 170 US dollars, US, um, 170 million USD in Anamco, you know, and, and, that, and that partnership is, 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 is working. And I do not see anything that stops anybody from investing in, in the Southeast. And let us remove this notion that Igbos only go to the North. Igbos are everywhere. Take any country, anywhere they are established. So North is not an exception. So do not believe that Igbos are in the North because they don't have anywhere to go. By nature of the Igbos, they look for opportunities wherever opportunities is and they establish their business and they excel. So if you go to Ghana, go to Benin, go to Congo, go to uh, Liberia, go to Rwanda, just name any country. They are, and when they go to any country, they make that place home. They join and they develop that place. They pay tax to the government. They work to make that. So the question is, why are other tribes not reciprocating? Why are the Northerners not coming to the Southeast to invest? I feel that they feel that they are not a part of that. And if you, if, if, if you take this backward all the way back to the era of um, Tafawa Baalewa, where there is this feeling that, you know, we have to protect our culture, our zone, and how we do things. So in their own zone, there is one person that has to be a, an emir at the top, and everybody has to lie for straight, and whatever he takes comes in. Now, they have the fear that once external people come in, that they are going to dilute that. And that is why they are not aligned people. They won't, they won't readily take you in. So they are doing everything possible to make sure that that particular culture and that system is maintained. That emirate system where one person is up and every other person has to like, you know, bow down to it and one person speaks for everybody. Unlike in the East or in the South, where you have a pure democratic system, even the chief or the exe will not make a pronouncement unless it has listened to everybody 
and most often it's based on voting where the chiefs will have to come together and at times even if the chiefs make their position the the villagers can rise up and say no this doesn't favor us then they still come back to revisiting so there is more of a democratic system of rulership in the south unlike in the north where you have this emirate system where the woman at the top uh, makes the whole case then one other thing I might want to quickly address is about the land in Igbo. There is a lot of land in Igbo land. If you want to buy land, come to me. I will sell land to you very, very cheap. If you want to buy 100 hectares of land for your ranch, come. I will sell land to you and it's protected. And once you buy land in Igbo land, there is something that seals that land. They will kill a goat and spill the blood of that goat on that land. Once that is done, nobody ever disputes that land with you forever and ever. So what I would want to advise some of our people, especially um, the, our people from the north, you know, Igbos has moved out of Southeast, they've come to the North, they've understood your culture, and that was why they are able to integrate. You have to move out. You have to move out, go to other people's culture, learn their culture and understand, so that you don't sit in your small place and begin to gesticulate that, okay, one group of people is doing drug, and that's why, I mean, it, it, does, it, it, does, it doesn't make sense. So, so let us realize that at the end of the day, there is a two-way thing. You, I come to your place, I learn, I live in peace with you, you come to my place, you learn, you live in peace with me. So I will encourage them to do more of the coming. And believe you me, if that is done, Nigeria will have a better place to live. But then, get this very, very clear, and I'm making it very, very clear. The North are still having this hold of their system. They do not want any dilution. And any attempt of, by anybody to want to get into it will be resisted. You know, so you need to get that clear. And, and I know some of them here will not deny that. It, 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 it is the culture, it is the way they are running. And that is one of the um, biggest impediments we have in terms of integration in the, in, 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 in the country. I want to look forward to them coming down and having a more open and journalistic view and let's be able to integrate and run a more inclusive government. Thank you. All right, um, I thank you very much. I can see some hands up, but I think what we'll do now is to allow our discussants to reflect on what they have had from other discussions. I think that is fair. Before we now allow, there are so many habits, please have patience with us. Let's see whether what other discussions have said have made the discussions to maybe change their mind or further clarify their thoughts. Let's start from the beginning again. Um, Dr. Lomefo, if you are still here, you took a very strong position, very, very strong position in the beginning. I, yeah. Have I'm, you changed I'm your still mind? still here. Yes. Have you changed your mind in no, any way? I haven't uh, quite uh, changed my mind. I think uh, my position remains um, what um, I postulated it to be. Um, my... Um, uh, video may not be so clear where I am. That is the Nigerian situation. The lights uh, keep uh, fluctuating, going up and down. You see, Nigerian situation is a peculiar mess, that's the truth. And um, it is so for two reasons, like I said, because the structures we have Going for us now. Two minutes, please. Uh, us, they can't uh, work. Dr. Can't Mefoy, we have uh, two, two minutes, please, if you don't mind. Two, two minutes. So, so that we allow you to raise up the hand to speak. Yeah. Go ahead. Hello, you said? Yeah, I'm saying you, well, you have two minutes so that we allow those who are raising up their hand to make comment or ask questions. So, Dr. Mefoy, please, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I say that the situation we have in the country is a peculiar mess. We can go on pretending. We are used to, we are used to that. We are used to that is a full complement of a system that will never work. And that is exactly what it has been. It has not, we have not been able, we have not been able to really get anything going for us. Because but but let me ask you this direct question. Um, Dr. Mefa, what we want to hear is... Realities, the way we should face them. Excuse me, Dr. Structures. Mefa. Hello, Dr. Mefa, please. These structures, unless Dr. they <laughs> are put in place, nothing will work. Dr. Mefa, are you and, hearing um, me? I, I, I don't know how to really assure us that whether we like it or not, 
Look, you see, Igbos in the north are not are not and are, are not are not a are not a northerners. They are Igbos. I tell you because the procedures that will make them to become something else, you know, the conditions don't exist. So that's the truth. No, they shouldn't delude themselves. But I sympathize with them. I understand their problem. They are apprehensive. They are only bringing that in as a stopgap to uh, safeguard themselves. Because the president of the country is not offering uh, any such uh, cover that can now cover them. That's just the truth. So let them forget uh, uh, what they are looking at. If they feel too insecure, they should return home where they belong. That is the only place they belong. And uh, where they are, where they are developing, they should continue to develop. The people they are developing appreciate. It is their politicians that are making all these political statements, trying to push them out and inherit their sweat. But there is God, no matter what we do, there is a God, God exists. The, the God we serve, we have the final say. I am not saying this because I feel helpless. I am saying this because I know it is self-evident that God will not continue to allow this to run the way it is running at the moment. We are going to get out of this mess. Evils of the North, please don't give up your heritage. We are not begging you. We are not really begging you. We are just reassuring you that you are you, you are part of us. You belong to us. You All are right. us. You can be something else. All right, we thank if you go away, you cannot be what you want to be now. It can never work for you. This will never give you that chance to pay. Doctor, before thank you to the bank. And thank you, you cash. Very we thank you. Uh, we thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sani Said. Two minutes. Have you changed your mind or have anything you heard from other discussions helped you to <laughs> clarify your thoughts from your position? No, I haven't Two changed my mind. Two minutes, okay. please. Yeah. Okay. No, I haven't ch changed my mind. My position remains the same. My question to all those listeners is, if an individual can claim a citizenship of the U.S., why can't why can't a fellow Nigerian claim an common indigenship of uh, another state? This is just a rhetorical question. Let's use use our senses. If Nigeria is one and still one, a person that claims a citizenship of U.S. can come back to his country and claim an indigenship of a particular state. Even if our constitution does not make provision for this, it should be reviewed. It should be amended and inserted somewhere else. Now, from what I learned from uh, some of the speakers, they don't even believe in the conglomeration called Nigeria. They don't believe in that. So if I will not be surprised of whatever they said because they don't even believe of the existence of Nigeria. Yes, we all know that there was a mistake made, but we need to come to terms with that. We need to start initiating process and change our mind, our mindset, and develop the country at large. America was not uh, as it was in the, in, in the last 200 years back, but the people changed their mindset and developed their country. They don't even talk of religion or ethnicity. The number of tribes in America supersedes that of Nigeria, but even an evil person that resides in the U.S. doesn't believe that he, he is an evil person. He calls himself an American. So, uh, and now, what I learned from experience is that we have only two ethnic groups in Nigeria. That is the ethnic of the oppressed and that of the oppressors. Why do I say so? Even today, the Southeastern governors disassociate itself from uh, the, 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 the so-called agitations mm. of uh, I, uh, IPOV, IPOV. So you see, and up, to, up till today, 
there's no any single lawmaker or inner caucus of uh, the evil that are representing uh, uh, their communities and the National Assembly that passed any form of bill for referendum. This is to tell you that our leaders have the same mindset and we elected them there, they represent us. Then if truly they are representing you, why are they not calling for referendum or calling back your fellow uh, brothers to, to the Southeast? So we need to understand this. The unity of Nigeria is not negotiable. And uh, I, I understand that the last speaker, I think it's Marcel, made mention that some tribes, the minority, the minority tribes here in the North are not looked after. Let me just cite an example with Kaduna State. For your information. 30 seconds, please, governor, round up. Okay, the governor of Kaduna State appointed two commissioners who are Yoruba, currently serving. And we have Muiwa Adeleke, who is his advisor on investment, a very powerful and influential special advisor to the governor, even more than, he acts even more than some of uh, uh, the commissioners. We also have Jimmy Lawal. There are other tribes here represented in the administration of Kaduna State. So you saying that we don't uh, recognize the existence of minority minority groups isn't true. Go to Kano State. There are so many special advisors to the governor that are not Muslims, that are not even from the north, but they were appointed to represent the minority groups that reside in those in, in that state. For instance, we have. Uh, a, a robot person that was appointed that is currently serving as a special uh, uh, advisor to Ganduji. All right, so we thank I you. So many examples. I, I, I think at this point, so, you, yeah, sometimes in this discussion, I wish someone will address the, the question of why some governors in the north have Yoruba commissioners, Igbo special advisors, and even the southwest, but I don't think any of such positions exist in the Southeast. Any Thank governor you, appointing a non ibu commissioner or, but I think at some point such issues will have to come up, but let's be, let's be going, Please, let's be going on. Someone need to Google this information. Yes, uh, FCC, this information yeah, we thank you. To, to um, so that he'll be sure of what I am seeing. All right, uh, FCC Jones, uh, let's see if, I think it's your turn now, isn't it? Yes, FCC Jones, come on, sorry. Two minutes, please, two minutes. I think um, it is difficult for me to exhaust what I have to say, but I will run it. Mm. The major problem we have in Nigeria is that nobody wants to take responsibility. Everyone here has kept saying Nigeria, it is, this is unworkable in Nigeria because of the kind of country we are in. What is Nigeria? Nigeria is in existence without you and I. We are the Nigeria. There is nothing like Nigeria. If all of us move out of this place now, this place will not be a country. Mm -hmm. So why do we fail to take responsibility? Why are we saying if they don't cut you? FCC Jones. They don't cut you. We are, the futile attempt to disunite Nigeria has become a business for most people. It has become a franchise. People are doing this business even though they know it won't work. But because they know that our politicians, our elites, not just politicians, the academics, the very intelligent people who are in this country will want to become popular by saying what they believe will click with the emotions of the people. Because if you come out today in the Southeast, for instance, if I want to become very popular and stop being the villain a lot of people see me as, I will come out and say, Biafra, on, on Biafra we stand. And a lot of people will begin to clap for me. Even though they know that's not true, that's not going to work. Now you are talking about, I have about three friends who are in the Nigerian police force today, 
bearing, taking the position of Northerners. They are seen as indigenous. They took, they got those appointments, those uh, jobs from the slots given to the Northerners. Because being a Northerner or coming from, if you want to come from, for instance, and go to one local government area, and if you have lived here a long, uh, long enough, if the local government chairman or if the local government authorities give you a letter identifying you as an indigenous of that place, you become an indigenous. Why are we making it look like it is something, it is some kind of rocket science for people to say, this is where I now come from. Young people, a lot of young people, at least we have had footballers in this country. Why are we trying to pretend as if we forget? We have had super egos players who are actually from the, the Southeast, but who took up the names of the Northerners and played as if they are Northerners and enjoyed themselves all through. There are lots of people who were born in the North who have, I, for instance, I had part of my growing up in Lagos State. I know a lot of friends who come from the East who don't know a word in Igbo language. They, are, they speak everything, they pass their Yoruba language, they make A's in their Yoruba language, but they don't know a word in Igbo language. And you cannot force them to come down to the Southeast tomorrow to become Igbos. Today, they have taken a place in the Southwest, and we have such people in the North. We have people here in Abuja, the vice chairman of AMAC is Igbo. Igbo's contest run for, I, I think there was a time Nicolas Okachuku from your place was a rep member in here in Abuja. So what else makes you an indigent if you are allowed to enjoy every rights and privileges of the other person who is born in that place? That's what makes you an indigent. In America today, Trump, who was president, recently relocated to Florida and said that's his home. America is as diverse as we are, or even more diverse, like some people, somebody stated. But they have been able to own up. They, they are not saying America is bad. They, 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 want, they have owned up to the responsibility of making America work, making building the America of their dreams. They, they don't say because you are from Florida, you can't uh, come to New York. All right, thank you. Such a thing in Lagos, too. Somebody who was a senator of a particular senatorial district in Lagos at in 2003 moved to another senatorial district and represented them. So we can actually make Nigeria work better if we accept that this is the only place we can call our home. Let us not stop doing business with uh, this idea of uh, dividing Nigeria because right. it's, it's uh, actually degrading for some people, but we should look for other things to do. All right. Uh, we thank you, FCC. Those who are raising up their hand, we'll come to you in a short while. Let's run through our panelists in two, two minutes, and then all those raising up their hand, we'll call on you, please. Uh, Maz, which I'm for, have you changed your mind? You have now seen some pan-Nigerianists here. Have you changed your mind regarding your position on their friends? So on, let us know. Maz, which I'm for, are you still with us? No. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Darwin. Uh, not at all. Uh, as you can see, they are all talking about what I've been saying. They are Rick Marolin trying to defend what is, in essence, indefensible. Nigeria is not one. That is the truth about it. The political leaders that we have today are you know, they are part of the problem. Look at Muhammad Buhari. Somebody is talking about uh, being one in Nigeria, Igbos, this Igbos, that. Look at the comment he made just um, over a week, a little over a week ago or thereabout, uh, regarding the fact that um, he was making reference to IPOB, but he was talking about Igbos, that they have businesses everywhere. So why will you go and target Igbo businesses if you really are a true leader. A leader from the northern part of Nigeria making some inimical statements, genocidal statements against a particular group of people, a tribe that he himself was at the forefront of committing genocide against. And then somebody is there justifying what is, in essence, unjustifiable. I am saying, and I will still repeat, that Nigeria is not one, and we all know it. The earlier we begin to identify the problems 
and begin to tackle it head on the better. But it's not going to happen anyway because Nigeria is what it is. Somebody is saying, why are Igbos in Northern Nigeria if, this, if the East is okay and all that? And I am grateful to some people who have made some references that Igbos are living in every part. Igbos go to different parts of the world and more importantly in Nigeria to develop that area. The Igbos will come to your state, they will pay rent, they will invest, they will pay taxes. These people in the northern part of Nigeria making these references know that without the Igbos, businesses will not move. Their states will not open up. The question rather should be thrown to them. Why are you afraid of investing in the eastern part of Nigeria? Why are you afraid of it? It's because you know that you can stay in the northern part of Nigeria and your yield money is flowing. They banned the uh, selling of alcohol in the north. But the taxes that are uh, that accrue from the one sold in the south is being used to finance projects in the north and all that. So why are we pretending? Somebody made reference that the Igbos are selling drugs. What are the Northerners known for? Terrorism. What are they known for? Killing of innocent Igbos. And they call it Christians. What are we talking about here? There are so many things. And so let us stop pretending. They went ahead. Somebody also said that it's a good development for Igbos to say that they are from Northern Nigeria. It is an anomaly for an Igbo man to begin to say that. That dream is not realizable. Why is it that we don't have Northerners of Eastern Nigeria and all that? In fact, they know that they are looking for something. Some of them have gone to praise Muhammad Buhari that has just, you know, out of his, you know, irredeemable position from his hatred on Igbos, on people they call the Afros, have continued to advance, you know, a project that he did not finish in the 1960s, the genocide against our people. And somebody, after all this, we turn around and say, Muhammad well, Buhari is doing very well and all that. These group of people calling themselves Igbos of Northern Nigeria are not true to themselves. They are, for political reasons, doing what they are doing. And so they are not representing the Igbos. And there is no need even talking about them. You know, somebody also talked about the Senate uh, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria trying to uh, pass a bill on indigenous. And they failed because Nigeria is unworkable. Why are we deceiving ourselves? It's not going to work. And we know it. You see, so in the real sense of it, in summary, Igbos are the nation builders, I must say, because they are everywhere. If you talk about tribe in Nigeria who are Nigerians, you talk about Igbos, but they have been subjugated, they have been emasculated economically, they have been politically disenfranchised, they have been killed, they have been physical violence against them. And People are sweeping all this under the carpet. So how long will the injustice continue? All right, thank you. I somebody mentioned referendum. The only way forward is for referendum to be held in every part of Nigeria, but more importantly, in the old Eastern region, for people to decide where they want to be. It is not a crime for people to stay in their own country and also have no more diplomatic relations. Biafras can remain in Biafra land, in the Republic of Biafra, and still make friends with Nigerians, and still live in Nigeria, and all that. So what are we talking about? I deliberately did not want to go into the merit or the merit of Niger political history of Nigeria, the legal yeah. implications and all that, because yeah, we, I know- Yeah, we will go into- <laughs> Position. Nigeria is unworkable. All right. Uh, we well, thank you. I, I, I trust that all our discussers will wait when we call on the those who are in this meeting 
you also listen to them when we start calling on them what we have to say. So please, I hope you will wait to hear from all these guys raising up their hands. Before I call on those raising up their hands, let us hear finally from, um, okay, we still have a Pamiat, please. Pamiat the Gat, please, two, two minutes so that we wouldn't miss all these hands before it's getting late. Pamiat, okay. two, two minutes. I'll try to correct my name. My name is Pamsin, oh. not Pami. Oh, Pamsin Degyat. Sorry. <laughs> the Pamsin, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm still on my position. The issue of Northern Igbos is just an idea. It's not practicable because it's not practicable until, because it's an idea that should be practicable actually, but it's not until residency is the basis of citizenship and not indigenship. Until you remove the fact that commissioners or ministers are appointed by indigenship, not by merit. If we make it by merit or by capacity to deliver on the tax, fine. Then we are likely to get there. Be equally, until we have leaders that understands that Nigeria is a country for all, not a, the kind of leaders we have, like we have today, then we, that is a might. It can never be a reality. Uh, my last speaker is uh, very, very passionate about Biafra, that Nigeria uh, is not working. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that position because Nigeria, like America, equally had their own problem, but they fixed it. So until we agree and are willing to fix our own, even when you create a Biafra, there will be a minority uh, group in that Biafran nation. So what will happen? They will equally look for secession. That is not the way to go. That has been my position on that. Now, we need to equally carve out our own democratic system that will protect every small ethnic minority because that is where the problems are. When the majority of the Hausa Igbo Yoruba are domineering over the minorities, then we keep having these issues and people will want to get their issues hard. So that's my position. What we call Northern Igbo is a might. It's not practicable. And I think I still remain on that my position, yes. Hello, is it my turn? Yes, Mr. Ali Baba, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think uh, uh, Mr. Jones actually spoke most of my mind. You see, a, a, a lot of these uh, elites, just like he said, so elites have converted it to a business, political or actual financial, financially rewarding business. And the focus has been on appointments and appointments. And this Northern Ebos, it's good that they engineered, they engineered this. Uh, in discussion that we're having. If they were waiting, if it was only political appointments were the, the all and end all of life, they won't be where they are. They won't even be in such huge numbers as to even recognize and tag themselves. There is more to life than political appointments. Now he's saying Nigeria is not one because of this division. It's Imo State one. Isn't Uzo Dima accusing Okoro of instigating the violence in his own state? That's even before you get to Biafra. It's a single state, and one governor succeeded another, and is accusing the other of undermining his governors. And who are they receiving? Uh, is the people. So I think the more we, I mean, the, the focus has always been on elite privileges, and they are the ones that have converted this, this ethnic, ethnic and primordial divisions to a business uh, venture, either for, uh, for political gains or for financial gains. What matters to the human, the average uh, Nigerian, principally is to improve his standard of living, good schools, good roads, you know, and then of course, access to jobs. These are what matters to him. And these are problems that are pervasive across the entire nation, the entire nooks and cronies. The local government chairman fails, the governor fails him, his representatives fail him. And just like, uh, I think it's still the same Jones or the other comrade, there are actually only two tribes in, in, in every uh, environment and in Nigeria in particular, the oppressors and the oppressed. But because they know a lot, uh, majority of the oppressors are gullible. They use this ethnicity and religious and sectional settlements to keep them divided so that they will continue to hold sway over the, the exploitative, their exploitation. So I think the more, for the elites, the truly 
discernible elites and genuine and I mean patriotic elites for us to focus on what works. And these challenges, like we said, are delivering the, I mean, good governance and then the good the, the improving on the livelihood of these people. Focusing on, of course, even CME students are different. If you really were out to look for the issues, even CME students are inherently different. Even if, uh, even though it is said that they broke up from a single egg from, 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 the, from the womb. So when you emphasize differences, you get them by the tones, but it's been converted to an elite business to continue to keep people so that their attention is completely divided from the misgovernance, from the corruption and exploitation and their uh, complete abandonment. And that is why we need to refocus this issue of ethnicity. It does no one any good except the elites that are benefiting from it. And that's why you can have scammers, felons like uh, uh, Inandekani holding sway over the entire people. Somebody was alluding to the embrace system. How, what can be worse than having a scammer that is hibernating abroad, you know, under, undermining an entire uh, subregion? Why is the democracy, why is the republicanism that people brand this all over the place? This is contemporary times when people are going to play historic times. In contemporary times, you have a scammer, a fellow of no, 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 no job. Now that is manipulating an entire uh, 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 subregion, you know, and making it ungovernable. Speaking from, from uh, his hideout, and somebody will now, uh, you know, try to denigrate a, a well-established culture and structure that even the colonialists couldn't, couldn't replace. They had to even try to mimic it with the direct rule that they had in the, in the Northeast. So I think we should be careful the kind of history, I mean, journalist history we, we brandish. We are talking of contemporary times. In contemporary times, what matters is what works. And what matters is the fact that the leadership across all uh, in the nooks and crannies have failed. And they, have, they are united in continuous oppression of the people. And then let's focus on that. That is raising the standard of living of the people and this uh, and continuously exposing this uh, conflict matchers because uh, these ethnic uh, champions are merely conflict matchers but they gain from it just like uh, John, Mr. John said either to gain popularity to gain recognition to get settled or to get from financial uh, you know remuneration out thank of you. this uh, grand standing yeah well, thank you very much finally before we Call on our doors, raising up their hand. Please restrict it to two minutes, Marcel. Okay, um, thank you, Mas, um, Dan. Again, I, I repeat, and I want to make reference to the fact that the minorities in the North are not treated fair. So I don't think anybody should think of joining that min minority. And I'm saying it, and I want someone to present me with facts and figures. You have close to, close to 200 ethnic minorities in the North around that, and then look at the appointments and the political positions you know who are the people there at the federal level first look, look at it at the federal level what percentage of minorities are included you can't take you can't have 20 positions you take 18 and then give out two and then you are pointing to that two that you have you know you have taken care of minorities that doesn't work go to the states within those states look at the minorities in those states how are they treated the same thing so these are facts and I don't want anybody to dispute it. Let's not a bit around the bush. The minorities in the North are not treated fair. So anybody thinking of joining the North as a minority is, is practically digging his grave. The, people, the minorities there are looking for ways to escape. So you going to join, you are just digging your grave. Now, about somebody talking about John Day's um, his, his history, I mean, things are written all over the whole place. When the British conquered the, the, the North, they maintained the indirect rule because they found out that the system was a way to control the, the, the entire population. So that was why the Emirates system was not demolished, okay? And that Emirates system was what has taken them up to this point. Now, let's make it clear that you cannot have an Emirates system where one person, you know, makes law and everybody obeys, and a democratic system down south, and you want to match these two, and that's why it has become practically impossible for Nigeria to work. I would rather want my, my, my brothers in the North to focus their mind and attention in talking to their senators and House of Reps and political leadership. Every attempt that has been made in this country to review the constitution and make this country work has been pushed down by most of the Northern representatives. And what I usually say is that, I mean, how many years do we have to live on this earth? You live and go. But you have created a problem that will continue to haunt the generations that are to, 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 to come. 
So let them focus their attention in talking to their Northern leadership and let's have a country that works for everyone. Now, in terms of people having a right to request for a referendum, the UN um, rights on, indig on indigenous people is very clear. And what it simply says is that every indigenous people have a right for self-rule. Now, the UN charter mandates the country that whenever any indigenous people have made a claim to a right to self-rule, you are bound to put in mechanisms in place that will address their grouse. So, so let us keep this clear. Nigeria is supposed to address any issue raised by any indigenous people within the country. What the government needs to do is to look at this mechanism and say, do we have a mechanism that will address this? If there's no mechanism that will address this, then you put in place laws that will address it. You can't, you can't lock people up and tell them not to talk. It doesn't work anywhere globally. I mean, the UK has like four countries in one and they are all working peacefully. Look, um, Dan, uh, the most important thing we need to know is uh, diversity and inclusion. You know, the moment you solve this problem in Nigeria, our problem is solved. Diversity means that when you sit at the table where you want to make decisions, are everybody equally re represented? And Buhari is even the worst culprit of the world. And these people are not even telling him, I do not see Ali, Ali Baba cautioning Buhari in his appointment. Has it ensured diversity? Has it ensured inclusion? You cannot seclude people and ask them to keep quiet. It doesn't work. So if anybody wants to progress this country, we, we all need to come together and you know, reason like human beings, reason like normal human beings and make sense. Let us make it work. Now, if you do not want to make it work, then don't blame people that want to, that want to exit. You cannot force me to, 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 to stay. Feed me, you are not feeding me. And then you are forcing me to stay. Allow me to go and look at my food. Thank okay. you. So, so, so let us just get this clear. And I know that our Northern brothers here, especially everybody, we need to reason and right. let's build a Nigeria that works for all. Diversity and inclusion. Ensure everybody is equally represented and ensure everybody is equally taken care of and there will be peace in the house. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right, let's open up the floor now. Um, um, you guys, more than 40 people have been listening and uh, hundreds more. I, I'm, I'm watching the comments on Facebook and YouTube as well have been very, very, very hot. And people are raising a lot of issues. So let's listen to you guys. Please keep it to two, two minutes. Two, two minutes. And I almost say please. Two, two minutes. Yes. Um, Dan, thank you. Dan, uh, from the back door, you're organizing a national conference. So I'm, I'm impressed with what I hear. But um, the idea of Northern Eagles does not exist. I don't think a new man will be there. Because every evil man belongs to an Omunna, that is a clan or kinsman, and you, you, your name is there. And you're, you're supposed to be paying your dues annually, or as the case may be. Anytime there's marriage, burial, and all that, you can do their lady. So I don't think there's an, anybody, an Igbo man, who will say that I, I am a Western Igbo or Northern Igbo. No, you are abroad. You are Igbo in diaspora, just like our people that live in America and Ghana, anywhere. That's, that's, that, that's given culturally. That is not acceptable, and that doesn't happen. So those guys that are saying they are comedians, that's one, from Igbo perspective. The secondly, we'll ask ourselves, we want Nigeria to work. I noticed that you have diversity visa by US, Canada, all the states in Canada pitch, right, for people to come and join them and become can Canadians. They have deliberately pl deliberate plans to do that. Uh, guys, Nigeria will not restructure. The people that benefit from the present structure will stop it, right? The people who want it will be angry for it. It's understandable that Igbo people believe that we are traveling a bus called Nigeria that is moving at uh, 100 kilometers per hour, and they think they can move faster at 300, you know, 300 kilometers per hour because of their innate abilities or the what, they, what moves them. They want to come down from that bus, but the operators of those buses are saying, no, we move that move at speed. That is the issue. So the question now will be, how can Nigeria be changed? So <laughs> that is a very big question. Number one, we we'll talk about cultural, uh, how cultural vision. How do we see people? Yes, people who are ruling Nigeria now do not understand why some people won't keep quiet, won't respect their rulers. That is cultural, right? Then the Igbo people who I, I come from a town where the Igwe 
cannot come to my house and tell me what to do. I'll walk him out. That's how it is done in Igbo land. So it is a cultural thing that we have to understand ourselves. Maybe and create a loose end how we relate. Trust me, if we structure Nigeria, I can move down to Adamawa. I respect their, I wear their clothes, eat their food, obey their laws, right? And become and, and respect them, make my money and pay taxes and all. That's what Indians do here, right? So I think we have to actually, if we want to be Nigerians, we have to decide how we'll be Nigerians. Then who says a uh, referendum? That won't be a referendum. Nobody will do referendum because referendum was done on the uh, 30th of May, right? We saw everybody obey. So why would they, why would government say there will be referendum? Referendum has already been done now. So if you do that, they will vote for opting up up out. So I think we need ourselves in Nigeria, right? This, when you go to the airport, you see a lot of white people coming to Nigeria. They are coming for the population. We need, we have the size, right? We are bigger as a country. But the way we are actually are now, we need to think of that. Otherwise, we're going to pieces. So in summary, there won't be Igbo, northern Igbos. People who are saying that are deceiving themselves, so they know they are lying. Rather, we have Igbos living in the north, right? Igbos have home, we have home base. They belong to Omuna, they belong to their clan, they belong to town, right? They can't go there and call themselves. They, in fact, they're actually a political offshoot between themselves. It can't happen. It doesn't happen anywhere. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mohammed Jamil Muhammad, please, your turn now. Thank you, Mr. Dan. It's a pleasure being here. And I also want to thank uh, those who publicized this uh, engagement that made some of us to know about it. Let me begin by saying this that we are, our major problem is stereotyping ourselves. It is just very clear that good people exist in every ethnic group or every religion, so, so as well as bad people exist in the scene. So stereotyping one side, either North or South, Ibu, Hausa or whatever, as all bad people like I have heard here, people have called each other's name, stereotyping, that will not help us. So let us know that there are good and bad people in every ethnic, ethnic group or religion. That's one. Two, I think the problem of Nigeria is a problem of both the leaders and the led. The leaders, what they have failed to give us is good governance and justice. And the led, what we have failed to give ourselves to make Nigeria work is patriotism. We are never patriotic as Nigerians. In fact, we see ourselves more to our inclination to our ethnic group to, or to our religion or to something else than the nation that has brought us together. Unless and until we change this, side, this, this attitude, the leaders have to give us good governance and justice and the led have to be as patriotic as possible to make Nigeria work. And lastly, I want to say to all of us that have laid claims that, like I said at the beginning, there are good and bad people. Like uh, the last person of the panel, panelists that talked about uh, Northerners not going to East, east to establish businesses. There are records and there are examples that I can quote even by name and places where Northerners have gone to attempt to even buy land and they were not given to obtain shop and they were not given because they are not from the Igbo land. But that is not happening in the North. It doesn't mean that everybody in, in Igbo land will do the same. And it doesn't mean that because Igbos are in the North that everybody in the North is allowing Igbos to have shops and to own businesses. So please let us know it that because of this peculiarity and then this, these issues that we have, we have to just go back to these two things I've mentioned. Leaders, be, give us good governance and justice. They led, let us be patriotic to our country and we'll have a better Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Njenje Media, please. Mazi, Tochukwe is okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you all the speakers that, have, uh, that uh, spoke this evening. I think uh, let me help us situate something here because I think there is, um, you know, listening to everyone, I think we are mixing two things here. One, I think somebody uh, um, made that point. One is indigenship, the other is residency. Now, if someone who is from Anambra moves to Kano, it can, after a while, become a resident that can give him or her the permission and the right, you know, to either contest election, vote or be voted for. But that person remains a resident of that particular place, has no right 
to go to the uh, to the clan of uh, of Namude and want to contend uh, contest an emirship. That is, you know, that is not given because when you go to dictionary, it says that indigenous ship is the status of being a native. Now, underline that word, a native, or quote unquote, in Nigerian context, it says the son of the soil, meaning your parents are from that place. So, if our people, uh, some Igbos, have gone to the to the northern part, are saying, "Oh, they are now indigenous of that." I think there, I will agree with uh, Mr. Law Mefo or Dr. Law Mefo, who says that uh, that is basically a political statement because they think that their lives and their properties are under threat. That is given. Now, the question I have for the comrade, uh, uh, colleague who is there is, you know, when Dan, uh, when Mr. Lumba asked you about uh, the things you, you know, when you people issued threats and, um, and um, you know, quick notice to Ndibo, you said you didn't know these facts, no, sorry, you said you issued, you issued threat, eventually you withdrew it. Then I asked myself, those facts that eventually became available to you, were you not privy to this fact before you issued those threats? Then you made a statement that also that, no, that Northerners do not own properties in the South. Then I asked again, you as an individual, have you tried buying any property in the South? Especially if we come back to the Southeast and it was not given to you or it was not sold to you. Because I think we must walk away from this you know, generalization here. Where I hear that something, some, uh, this, they don't sell uh, uh, people properties. And I gave this example yesterday in my program. When you go to near with the down here, the moderator is, is a witness. With 15 million, you'll be struggling to buy a lot. If I go to Canada today with 200,000, I can buy a land, right? So what is your, what, what is the attraction for you to go and take 15 million probably that you don't have and buy a land in the Navy and what are you going to use it for? Because you need to understand that this space called the Southeast, for instance, is only about 29,000 29, square, uh, 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 you know, square kilometers. Whereas that is almost equivalent of the state of Kogi, not to talk of Niger state, not, not to talk of Bonu, Kogi. So when we understand these things, we, it, you know, it, we begin to situate it and get to the point where I think the majority of what has been discussed here, and that's probably on the realm that we should stay on, is on the rights of, according Nigerians, the rights of residency. And sadly, again, if you go back to the APC manifesto, these, uh, in my belief, uh, these are some of the things that uh, were promised that should be looked into. As someone noted before last year, uh, uh, you know, there was a brief discussion and the one year later, these things are not done. And the, because these things are not done, that is why we will keep seeing that a people will come to Okota and they want to cast their vote. And someone will say, oh, they are not part of us. Why would you leave uh, the Southeast and come here to decide our electoral future? Thank you very much, everybody. I thank you very much. You have so many hands. I would have loved to uh, exchange in one hand from the North, one from the South, but the, I, I will be forced to call now someone again from the Southeast, from the hand I'm seeing. Mas HTM Okoye, please. Oh, thank you, Dan, and thank you, everyone. Um, I think um, we are conflicting a lot of um, issues here. I'll go through the list. We got the personal element of this, which, to my view, anyone is allowed to live wherever they want and be whoever they want to be. Even in the West here, we have people that change their, 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 their gender as they see fit. So everyone is allowed to become an indigent of wherever they see fit. The political side of it, I'm going to leave by the side. Then you have the cultural and the traditional bias of this discussion, the traditional and the character of a people. Let me take the character of a people. Igbo people, for example, 
are ambitious. Evil people are loud. We are showy. Other people are, you know, you know, they have their own way of doing things. They're more quieter, a bit more, more um, um, traditional in their way of doing things. What does it make an evil tradition or culture any more superior than the house of tradition? There is no, there is no, there is no, there is no superiority there. House of tradition and culture is what it is. Evil tradition and culture is what it is. There is beauty in both of them. There is beauty in both of them. So the, the, the Northern Igbos, as we're discussing tonight, have the absolute right to be um, Northern Igbos. And no one can tell them otherwise. I know people, I know a doctor in particular that lives in Poland, he's an Igbo man. He has never set foot, since he started living in Poland, he's never set foot in Igbo land. He has forgotten that he's an Igbo man. So all this talk that Igbos um, um, has to be, be, belong to this, um, uh, belong to uh, Omona and all that, it's nonsense. It's only somebody that, 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 that take interest in that part of the kind of thing that take it seriously. Some people don't take it seriously. Then on the cultural and traditional and, and, and bias as well, people has to understand that we Igbos, we, 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 we like to build things. We like to develop things. But that doesn't make an also man who is content in his poverty any more or less of a human. There is a certain beauty in the simple life an also man lives with his cattle or with his, with his camel and with his wife and children. There's beauty there. As a traveler myself and as a lot of runner, I've been to so many, so many countries in the world that when you set foot in the in the cities, that's where you find all this all this um um um, um, um racism and all that. Once you step out and start to meet the actual indigenous of the place in the villages, they treat you as, as a normal person. They wouldn't see you, your color, or see, or they'll just be interested to know where you come from, how you're doing, how you are enjoying their land. That's what they're interested in. So all this talk about, about um, um, Igbo and Hausa people denigrating them because they, their culture, maybe they're being relaxed with their culture. It's, to, me, to my mind, it's wrong. There's a lot to, to be celebrated about Hausa culture. And there's also, there's a lot to be celebrated in evil culture. None of them is, 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 is not either one or the other. Nigeria could do very well politically if we let go of this cultural nonsense. Because to my, and for the, any educated person, every educated person knows that culture change. Culture changes. Culture doesn't stay the same. Thank you. So, so when people, talk from cultural standpoint, they're making a great mistake. Thank you. Thank you very much. JC, uh, I think that the professor, JC, J. Okebo that I know, if it is, please unmute yourself. JC, J. Okebo Esquire. Okay, it's not the professor that I know, it's someone else. Okay, JC, J. Okebo, can, you, can we hear from you, sir? Can, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, my name is GCJ Ukebu. Um, I live in London. And I want to say that I was born in Kaduna and I school there. And um, I also speak the language, you know, but even though I've lost, you know, some of them, you know. Um, you see, my take is that we, we have to change our constitution because that's the root of all these problems. And um, unfortunately, we have
you know, how is Nigeria going to work? My, my, my hunch is that we should remain as one country. But I, I, quite frankly, I have some reservation about, you know, I want to ask the gentleman that spoke, you know, that said um, um, the house house, our house brothers cannot do business in the East. I think that's not really the true position of things. Um, what you find actually is that those who come to the East to do businesses, uh, even the boys, they, they, they are, they are, they are not the main investors, the main outside investors. They only come, trade, pick up the money, you know, whatever they can pick up and go back. They, they don't come to do, you know, to settle, like the way Igbos go to the north, settle, begin to, you know, see the place, northern region as their hometown. That is one angle. but. Coming to us, the Igbos, if those who live in the north decide to say they are northern Igbos, I don't see anything wrong there. Quite frankly, I don't see anything wrong there if they decide to. So I don't know why we should be, you know, um, um, trying to make people not to belong to where they want to belong or where they choose to belong. We, we, we try to drag them to say that, you know, because our culture says this, it must be that way. And another example is, you know, our brothers who live around us, like um, those people from the Niger Delta and all that. If they choose, some of them choose not to be part of any struggle or part of us. We should allow them be, but there are others who want to be part of it too. So the deeper man, you know, has this problem of trying to coerce people. I think that should also stop, you know. So my take, you know, because of want of time is that we should try to find a way to think out with the Nigerian constitution and also try to reorientate ourselves. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Let's listen to Hyacinth now, and then afterwards, um, Evelyn. Uh, Hyacinth, please, and then Evelyn. Get ready. Oh, hello. Good evening, El. Okay, uh, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Elon TV, for this opportunity. Um, let me go straight um to what I think um we should be thinking about. First of all, um, let me let's forget about this issue of. Uh, can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, this issue of a uh, uh, housing man coming to establish business, Ibo man going not to establish. But first of all, let's come to back home. Have we taken responsibility to ask our leaders if they are fulfilling the mandate of the people who appointed them or who voted for them to go to wherever they are sitting now as leaders? Because, for instance, I don't see how the man coming to an Igbo land to establish business has anything to do with provision for a governor or for any leader to provide facilities for his indigent. I didn't see that as anything. So do we, have we been able to hold our leaders accountable instead of someone staying wherever he is pointing not say it say buhari say that say have we asked our governors what are you doing what why are you not giving us provision of our right has buhari actually stopped any governor for building schools or providing health facilities for any state has Buhari stopped any governor for building roads for his people? Has Buhari stopped any governor providing food, agricultural facilities for his people? Why do we leave the important thing and be focusing on, 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 on that, say, on that, say? Have we hold our leaders accountable to what they're supposed to provide to us as people who put them where they are? This is what we should be focusing on. For instance, the recent thing, let's hold on to the recent one, this palliative, if it was true that palliatives were given to every state, has one governor 
in any state made effort to give provision to, he, to their people? Has anyone made any effort? The whole 32, 36 states, if I'm correct, has any of them made any effort to provide even food for their people? Nobody questioned this. Everybody is focusing on not, not this, south, this. Has anyone actually hold them accountable? This is where we should be, this is where we should concentrate our effort on. The leaders, both from the local to the federal, hold them accountable of leadership. If we hold them accountable and make that position not unattractive for people, whoever goes there will be responsible and accountable for his leadership. Then that is where we'll begin. Not just this. Nigeria is so beautiful. Nigeria as one is a beautiful and a better place. I don't stand for any dis division. We are one and we should make it work and it's going to work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Evelyn, please. Yeah. Good evening, all. You're welcome. Um, yeah. Um, I heard what you people have said. Many people have spoken a lot and we have heard what they said. Uh, according to the last speaker, um, if I want to base in what you have said now, it'd be as if we are challenging each other. No, because everybody is saying his own mind, you know? Um, your own mind may be good, your own mind may be bad. But let me focus my own point on the issue of uh, those who want us to belong to Nigeria, that Nigeria is, uh, is indivisible. Nigeria is this or that. Let me ask this question to all of you. Carry this question everywhere you go. Say, Evelyn, ask this question to us. The question is this. Let's say an Hausa man ha uh, as a Muslim man has the right to marry 12, three or four wives. And the other people have the right to marry one or two. And in that uh, Hausa, because of his uh, religion, he has three or four wives. And they happen to have many children. And in that children, we have a, only one father with different wives. And they have many children. Then, out of those children, the father threatening one person out of those children, all of us, we should answer this question ourselves. Threatening one person, what do you think that that person, the father is threatening, we do. And if the father said, if I, if you come here in this, my house, I will kill you. I will pinch you. I will do this. What do you think that child will do? If the child is brilliant en enough, what will he do? Is he not to go and look for, he will go. And if he happen to get a chance, he will establish, his, he establish on his own. Is that not true? But if you are a father who know how to cuddle your children, but whether they are good or bad, you know how to talk to them. None of them will like to run away from their house. You are calling somebody standing there this last week, talking about Buhari. Is Buhari have, uh, is he the one to say this? Why did we vote him as a leader? We vote him, I myself, you yourself talking, can you go and check those people you said we should check? We have people we have elected to do the job. Buhari is it only just to collect the money and Thank share you. to the people, please, to share to the people. And when they share, they go home. He will not ask them, what are they doing with the money I'm sharing to you people? Thank it's you. my duty to come and ask them. So this thing, you ask yourself this question I ask you. So for anyone who is talking about staying in or staying out, mm. ask yourself that question. If it is you, what are you going to do? Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, let's take the remaining questions and then we will go back to our discussants to give us their concluding talks. Obi, Obi, please. 
We want to have everyone comment, so keep your comments brief, please. Obi, can you unmute yourself? Go ahead. Hello, good evening. Good evening, my brothers. My name is Obu. I am from Agule, but I'm residing in the United States of America. Um, I've heard what all my brothers say here, from the north, from the south, from the east and west, and uh, even people who are using United States as an example. Uh, Donald Trump moved from this thing to become the, the citizen. Uh, uh, in some way or, or indigenous. Um, we don't use United States as an example because uh, they have their structure, well-structured. Nigeria was not well-structured from the, the, from the get-go. Um, I've stayed here for more than 20 years. They cannot make me an indigenous of United States. My grandchildren cannot be indigenous of United States. My great grandchildren cannot be indigenous of the United States. We have Native Americans. They are the indigenous of the United States. Donald Trump is not an indigenous of the United States, but yet he's the president because he's the citizen. So for you to stay in the North, you can be a citizen of Nigeria. You can contest the election if the constitution were ranked, assuming we have constitution. But I know we don't, because what we have is just a mere paper. So that is why I say that the country is now well structured. Assuming we have uh, states, all these states are autonomous states or regions, autonomous regions like United States, all these problems will not be happening because we have to hold our states responsible. Not when, when everything is running from the federal government and federal government appoints every commission of police from every state. Where the state governor does not even have mouth in appointing the chief security. He is the chief security officer of the state, but cannot appoint uh, somebody to secure his state. So how can they how can the system work? So the system cannot work when the structure from the go from the beginning is not working. So the only way out is if we want to be together and tell ourselves the truth, we know what to do. We know what to do and, re and do the, the regionalization the way it's supposed to be. Or we'll go, everybody will go to their separate way. Because you are in a Biafra, we not, uh, not prevent you from living in another, having a, a property in, in another country. I can, because I'm a Biafra, we will not allow, not prevent me from having a house in the United States. And we will not have, uh, uh, prevent me from having a house in Ghana. So if something like that happens in Nigeria, before, because you are a Biafra and we don't prevent you from protecting your property in, in Kanu. I lived in Kanu for 10 years. It will not prevent you from uh, 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 protecting your property. So people are just unnecessarily uh, afraid because they don't want to come down and sit, up, sit down on the table and and admit where we are wrong and know where we are going to, where we are going from here. So if we don't want to stay together, we we'll, we we'll separate peacefully, amicably, like like not not and South Sudan, like India and Pakistan. It, it did not stop them from having properties in each of the countries. So thank you, my brother. Let me save this time for other people to to talk. All right, all right we thank you, Comrade Fanny, please. Quickly. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Um, yeah, we, we will agree to disagree, and uh, hopefully, we will get to a realization of reality. That is uh, what we need to face. There's something the saying that uh, those who make, uh, yeah, what do you call it, uh, peaceful uh, revolution, uh, impossible. Uh, of course, the they make the violent one inevitable. And that is what we are heading to. Whether we like it or not, we can uh, deceive ourselves all we want or argue or see reality and want to turn it upside down. We need to read it. We all know history. 
and history always repeats itself when people refuse to accept and they work on them to change them. So what we are facing now, and even the creator of this nonsense we are calling the country, that has nothing to do with the country in every definition. Nigeria doesn't mean, doesn't represent, it's not a country, it's not even a nation, but some people, even educated ones, sometimes uh, mess themselves up. You look up the definition of nation and their country, and then you ask yourself whether the so-called creation of that uh, uh, colony, because it's a business colony, it's a business anyway, turned to colony. And uh, you ask yourself, if the people that created this thing, Lugard and his uh, mistress that gave it nigger area, a bunch of niggers, the country's in, if they call it, they, after creating it and they say that this thing is oil and water that can never mix. And everything about it is just fraudulent from the name, from everything. When they say it's a republic, where on earth do you have a republic? And then you have an emirate, you have a sultanate, and you have monarch. And you have people that are practicing democracy. I mean, does it really make any sense to anybody that is reasonable at all? Let us once in a while sit down and uh, forget about all this. I know many people are here talking about with politics, APC, MPC, PDP, rubbish, getting their cuts. And that is why they see reality and they will be jumping around pretending that is reality. And they will start mixing up apple and orange. They will tell you America is this, China is this. But they don't ask how is those how are those countries managing? How are they faring? Before you start comparing yourself, you go through every process, not just pick the one that you want to choose to justify your distance. There is nothing called Nigeria to start with. It is a business name. So when I see people that should save lives trying to, because of one issue or the other. Look at the way the people are being slaughtered in, uh, in our land, in Biafra land, just because they ask for freedom. They've been going around peacefully. We've been trying everywhere peacefully, trying to tell people this thing will not work. When Fulani tell you that this whole place called Nigeria is their forefathers' estate. Well, thank you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let, me, let me finish, please. Uh, just give me a few minutes to finish. When people that... <laughs> please, uh, yeah. Five my, seconds, please. <laughs> When people that are supposed to be minority, that are not even indigenous to the land, will tell the whole majority of the people that this land belongs to their forefathers, is their forefathers' estate, and they are doing everything to practically tell you that they are trying to claim those lands. What are we waiting for? Are we going to wait for God to come down and tell us that we are doomed if we don't wake up to fight for our life? life? Look at the Northern Africa, North Africa, all those places, Egypt, uh, maybe all those places used to be black people. But the same problem now we are facing now that many of us want to sell their life and their future to full any caliphate is what happened to those people in the North. That is why up there now you don't see any North black people. It's only Arabs. And that is what we need to wake up now to prevent before it's too late. There is nothing wrong in sitting now in being each, if each village wants to be their own country. There's nothing wrong in it. Luxembourg is a, very, is, a, is a village in our place. So what are we afraid of? The better we put it, everybody be on their own, manage themselves. Some people use the example that say, oh, in my village, we are not even united. And this, Then what are you afraid of? Go home, go to your village and make it, make it work. If you know you have problem in your village, that is even the more reason why we should say, let's break it up, you know, the village that we survive, let them survive. The other ones will take, in, they take the refugee from them and help them. Instead of crumping everything, big problem, we know we don't have the brain, the brain that will Thank solve you. it. We sit there, want to kill each other because of that. Please. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, we call on Tango, please, and then Ifenna, and then we go back to our discussions to give us their concluding uh, Concluding talks, please. Let's keep it to two, two minutes. Thank you, please. And then if Anna, get ready. If I remember, history, history will remember you for your good work. You are contributing a lot for the, the, the real civilization. Uh, my comments, I'll make my comments, but I want to use this opportunity to call a Saeed and Ali Baba Jordan. And later I will come to each of the talks. Uh, Saeed, you have used your word many times. I meet it in the forum. People sell sex drugs. People do this. People do that. It's, it too. It's a, a, I call Saeed a, a happy victim. Because he is from Kakao Kaduna. I know his village. So look at that. Uh, Kaboro Kafasheng. Where does Saeed come from? So I see Saeed as a happy victim. 
a different issue. Those are his terms. Uh, coming to Alibaba, the call might be toxic. Toxic agitator. Now the Carlos come. We come each other. We know everything. The world is a global village. We are seeing what is happening. Um, a lot of things is going wrong. You people are afraid of competition. You don't compete. You want to see power. You like power. Oligarchy. Today, you must rule. You must be in power. How can Nigeria the group? How can we support the modern goal? China was being fake. Now that we correct. Uh, look at the uh, technology is trial and error. Technology is trial and error. Even today, I live in Germany. They, they, they still do mistakes in production. When they do mistakes, they record it and pay the customer back and, and review it. That's how it, it, it's been done. Uh, so, for accusing Igbo, people who are putting effort to do something, to move the country forward, then everybody becomes a lot Coming to Igbo, they feel you not to buy property in Igbo. Otedola is in Obama. I was a little boy, before I was born, I still don't like open a factory in you know, Onisha. I still don't like tires. I still don't like tires. Uh, this man, what's his name? A transporter. Thirdly, I was sat in Onisha that time. Oh, for that friend. They have property, they leave, but those outside that come, don't want to stay, they don't want to buy land. They will begin to the build land in Onisha. They say, no, babu, babu. They will sell their cows, sell their onions, sell their yam, sell the money for the north. They don't want to establish, they don't want to live. And they prefer to be in 40, 30 in a room. In a room. In a room. So it's not that we refuse to give the land to establish, but they don't want to establish. Uh, but few of them establish. Establish. Uh, then coming to the question of uh, uh, Igbo man, Igbo man being in the north. There's an uh, Arab Jews. When the state of Israel was created, some Arabs decided to stay with the Jews. Which Mahazin Nadikal have said it. That the study has said, if you want to be in the north, be in the north. If you want to be anywhere, be it. He said it's open black and white. What brings agitation? No port, no airport, nothing work in the east. The same group that believes people man will not have anything. So when you see somebody, you push people to the world. Now we are we are all over the world. Every country in the world, you see Ibo man there, Ibo man there. It's a sign that these people are running for this. Coming to brother Uchi Mesmo, now you are talking for Ibo. You as a royal deputy, he command, he was a commander, he was a, a commander and he was a deputy. Whether or not the car was in the How you drop your guard, we don't know. Now, now you are talking from the back of this, which we don't, we don't, we don't even understand your stand or your point. Thank you. I want you talking. So, so allow me. Give me some minutes. I want you talking to make a point on what you are saying. I see you are working to answer. Really, what happened is that people do not continue this question. Do the Nigerian if this is working? Nobody will agitate. All right. Well, thank you. So, you know the problem. Thank you, my brother. Um, if you that, please, and then we go back to our discussants to round up to allow our discussants to give their concluding talks. If Enna. Yeah, good evening, uh, participants. You have only two minutes, please. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, sincerely speaking, um, I appreciate uh, this discussion and thank uh, the organizers. Uh, first of all, I would like to go straight to the point. One, um, Nigeria as it is today is a very sad uh, situation we find ourselves because things are not working the way it's supposed to work. I'm a, personally, I'm not, a, I'm not proud to say that I'm a Nigerian because if I compare what is happening in other parts of the world, how an American can come and be proud as an American within and some other parts of the world. But here is a different thing altogether because I, I think that the leadership are not doing what they're supposed to do. Looking at what is happening in the country is very, very sad. 
in the sense that Nigeria as a, as a, as a nation is laid on a very faulty foundation. And when you, when you start anything you are doing in a faulty foundation, even marriage between a man and a woman, once the foundation is faulty, that marriage cannot stand. In the 50s, the 60s, Nigeria was working as a nation. The houses are living, the Igbos are living, the Yorubas are living, the other minority groups are living without any issue. Until recently, what we are seeing now is not what we used to see in the past. There are so much hatred, so much discrimination. Some people feel that they are born to rule, they are superior than others. It's not supposed to be so. We are Nigerians. If we want to call ourselves Nigerians, there should be equity, justice, level ground for everybody. No matter who you are, no matter the tribe, no matter where you come from, once you're a Nigerian and you're a Nigerian, cut across. Not when some section feels that they are, they are rulers over others. It cannot work. It's not possible. It cannot work. Except we don't want to want we, want, we don't want to tell ourselves the truth. Unfortunately, the so-called House of Assembly members, the senators, they are the beneficiaries of this, of what is happening now. And that is why majority of them doesn't want the constitution to be changed. If we want to tell ourselves the truth, if we want Nigeria to work. The main thing we need to do now is to restructure the country, amend the constitution, or we can equally scrap the constitution. Let us come to a round table and decide how to live as one Nigeria. I've took my time to go through that constitution from first page to last page. There is a lot of manipulations there. Even if I, two days ago, the, the session that talked about Ruga, I had an in-depth understanding about that Ruga and what it tends. In our constitution? Yes. <laughs> Land acquisition. Yeah. He didn't mention Ruga. But if you interpret it very well, that metamorphs to, to, to this idea of Ruga and the rest. So the thing is that we must be sincere to ourselves. And nobody wants to, nobody, people from the Southeast are not saying that, that they want to, actually they want to succeed. But what they are clamoring for. Let us come together and decide how we are going to live as one, how this country is going to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. All right. We go back to our discussions and then we'll call it a day. Our time is finished, but we still allow Sani, please make a presentation. We go through them and then we come to finish. Sani, please. Okay. Uh... Thank you very much uh, once again. So many people had made so many excellent presentation, but uh, I would like us to know that we are not here to divide ourselves, rather to unite ourselves yes. as ones. Because if you meet me outside Nigeria or somewhere, you embrace me as a brother from Nigeria, yes. meaning that we are one. Just that here, uh, some of our uh, the abnormalities made us look uh, uh, down at each other. Now, some, someone asked a question that, why is it that Northerners are not investing massively uh, in the Southeast? I would like to let him know that. Let, let him just look at the scenario. When one wants to locate an industry, he, he has to first look at the safety of his investment. That's localization of industry. Just look at the trailers conveying 
uh, tomatoes, uh, animals, and the rest of them, taking it to the south. What happens when there's a crisis? They were the first target. So this is a signal to tell any sensible northerner that he, should, he shouldn't invest at this point in time. Maybe in the nearest future. And secondly, uh, come on, please. I just jot something down. Mr. Uh, Elder Tangu made uh, a statement that I am also a victim of circumstance that I came from Zangwang Katov. So point of correction, I am from Zaria local government, not Zangwang Katava, not Zangwang Katav. So the, and he said that I made, uh, I called Igbo names. I didn't intentionally or deliberately call Igbo names, but I was asked question on the reason behind the Igbo quit notice. And I had to highlight to make others understand why we issued that quit notice. And part of the reasons were uh, the selling of counterfeit drugs here in the North. They are part of the reasons. I was just enumerating part of the reasons. So I am not calling, in fact, what I started uh, by commending the Ibus that Hello, can I come in now? Is it me or have Comrade Sally finished? No, I think I think it's a network problem from his end. I think Comrade Sani is fighting with this network now. <laughs> uh, I come in. Uh, Sani, let's allow Ali Baba to come in and then you can come back when your network stabilizes, please. Uh, Mohammed, yes. Thank you. Okay, oh. now. thank you. Mm. Yeah, I think first I want to respond to people that are taking this issue of succession lightly. So is the, the simple analogy I used to give people about this succession. They're expecting that when any person is, they can still own properties elsewhere or whatever. You know, at least if uh, a lot of us were not that old uh, during the civil war, but at least we witnessed what happened during the June 12th crisis. The, the, the avalanche of uh, return back to base and the quick, quick, I mean, uh, turn around that the people reverted to where they are more comfortable. And then the simple person that I mean, I know, like I said, I used to say is if you reject me as a respected neighbor, how do you expect me to accept you as an ordinary tenant? Because uh, I mean, what we are enjoying now as Nigeria, just like others that the sunny Nigerians have emphasized, is the size, the bigness, and the diversity. Once you become small, small enclaves like that, now nah, you see in South Sudan, most of the uh, people, people, I mean, the places that are broke up that others are sighted. I'm sure if I, in their hearts of hearts, they are regretting that uh, precipitated uh, thing. And it's all uh, those divisions who are propelled by conflict merchants like we have now, like the Inam, the Kanus, and the Bohos, that were able to instigate people beyond uh, common sense, and they end up into, I mean, you know, is to get people into self-immolation. Just like what is happening in the Southeast now. Cutting your nose to spite your face, attacking yourselves and then destroying infrastructure in the assumed, you know, uh, impression that you are hurting somebody else elsewhere. So I think the, the earlier we realize that, that uh, it's not uh, a, a walk in the park or an academic exercise, this session, the better. But most importantly, I still, just like some other, day, you know, discerning compatriot emphasize, we need to hold our local leaders accountable for the resources they are currently taking on our behalf. Because they are the ones that are benefiting from this distraction. Everybody is focused on federal appointment, federal allocation of federal. But yet, these state governors and the local governments are controlling between 50 and 75% of the resources. At least they get. 48% from the federal level. And then the internally generated revenue could raise their, the resources they are supposed to be managing on behalf of their locals to nearly 
uh, I mean, 70, 75 percent of the national resources. And we, we, we have been deflected from asking and continuously putting them on the line to account for these resources. And the ethnic champions that uh, will grandstand, get noticed, invited to the central, or continue to maybe uh, run popular contests in their locality. So I think we need, by and large, to refocus. Ethnicity takes nobody anywhere. Nobody has a role in what ethnic group he, he might from. It's just an accident, uh, I mean, divine uh, decree by the Almighty that you come out of this. What matters is that everybody will all have one life to live, and the be better we make of the life, the more likely we're going to enjoy the next life. But if all we do out of uh, primordial sentiment is to in initiate and instigate conflict, and we waste the entire little time we have here on that, what, what would we be accounting for uh, in the life beyond? All right, thank you. Everybody knows that nothing, absolutely nothing is developed under an atmosphere of rancor and division. So the earlier we focus on things that matter, and things that matter is that our leaders at every level must deliver on their mandate. Of course, there are challenges. And the challenges, whatever challenges we have, we have roots, we have uh, processes through which they, they, they can be ameliorated. Whether it is constitutional amendment, constitution making, or whatever, there is no way any violence will elicit it. It just has to go through the process that is already established. So what it behoves on anybody or any group that has ideas or that has grievances is to mobilize others, to sell, and mobilize others to see things their way. And when the crunch comes in terms of uh, voting, then they will vote for. for... Uh, uh, all right. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, we'll call on. For the uh, idea and then support it and, or through grandstanding or through interpret. Um, Ali Baba, thank you very much. This is your point. Um, let me ask, allow. Mazu Jemefo to make his concluding comments through this question I'll ask him now. If you listen to um, Mazu Jemefo, if you listen to Alibaba Mohammed, I think his postulation is that this separatist agitation is actually a distraction. So do you think it wouldn't have made more impact if all these pro-Biafra agitators channel the agitation to mounting pressure on the political leaders of the Southeast to implement changes to our constitution, changes to our governance in a way that will bring effective governance to everyone, that it will be more productive for this agitation to be channeled politically towards improving the union of Nigeria rather than being separatist in nature. What do you think? Use it to make, please make your concluding comments. Ma Zuchema, for please. Right, thank you very much. Um, first of all, my position still remains that Nigeria is an unworkable union and everybody in this, on this panel know, knows that. And they are just, you know, running around the circle. Having said that, the question you asked me is very interesting. Um, you know that the imbalance in the Nigerian system remains the, um, the, the, the obstacle on the way to progress in Nigeria. And it has been in institutionalized. There is no way you can begin to toe that line of trying to mount pressure on the governors, on the political leaders to uh, go through the National Assembly and all that, because these things have been done in the past. They have been contacted, the agitation for restoration of Biafra has been very uh, explicit in in terms of the demand by the agitators. But the point remains that the political leaders cannot be true to themselves because they are working for the Nigerian state. Just like, you know, uh, is it not uh, within the 20, last 24 hours, the governors of the Southeast 
for instance, have come out and say, we are against the agitation for separation, for secession and all that. We believe in one united Nigeria. Yeah, they are doing nothing. They have been there receiving allocation and all that, and people are worrying in abject poverty. They are not in the first place fighting for the interests of the people. They are fighting for their own interests. And then Alibaba was talking, making reference about casting a expression on uh, Biafra agitation, making reference to Nal Kanwa as a scammer. How about Muhammad Buhari, who is an arch sponsor of terrorism? They have been sponsoring Mietiala, Fulani Headsmen. They have weaponized that particular uh, area of cattle rearing and using it to unleash unimaginable mayhem on, on our people. How about these people? Where, I mean, they have been used to unleash mayhem, terrorism on the people of the East. Their leader is Muhammad Buhari, who has been using the instrument of the office to perpetrate crime. Do you, have, uh, do, do you have evidence yeah, of do you have evidence of that that uh, the president yeah, is using the I have evidence and all of you know that Muhammad Buhari has always been defending Fulani headsmen, saying that they are using sticks and all that, whereby we are we see them using AK-47, using all manner of sophisticated weapons of warfare, unleashing mayhem from Benue, from Middle Belt to Yerubalan to Biafala. And he has not been saying anything about it. And these people are very much, you know, eager to talk about Biafra agitators who are actually their victims. When you, institutionalize and legalize terrorism and use it against indigenous people. Their friends are at the forefront of bearing the brunt of these things. They are the victims, but they are going after the victims and leaving the terrorists themselves. Who are we deceiving? Do you see why I'm talking about the fact that Nigeria is unworkable, there is no sincerity. And all the people who are talking here know that it is unworkable. The Alibaba himself talking, he knows. They are not interested in coming to the East because they don't need to come there in the first place. Then they can stay in the Northern part of Nigeria and be making us dry. Why are we deceiving ourselves? Buhari Nam said that um, uh, he cannot cede um, uh, any part of Nigeria to those who are not elected that those who are agitating for restructuring and the uh, review of the constitution are ignorant and all that. It's on paper here, unless if I'm not uh, putting him right, but it's on paper, just read it. So somebody, a political leader, having such mentality, being indifferent and insensitive to the sufferings of the people, more importantly, aiding and abating terrorists, Sponsoring them using the money from Biafra land. I think anyway, I, I, at the end of this discussion, we will have another discussion you know, after this. So we stay. But this issue of when you say ignoring them, not doing anything, is it not different from saying sponsoring them, aiding and abating? Are they not different things? We'll come to that at the end of this. They are not, they are not, they are not different things because. There are evidences of Fulani headsmen, Mietiara, killing people in Benue, in Yoruba land, in Biafra land. But the president of Nigeria is ignoring all these things. He knows about what is happening. Even before he got, he got into office, he had been defending Boko Haram. All he right. had been defending these people. What are we talking about? Thank they you. have called him to be their, their patron, their negotiator. In fact, he's their patron. What are we talking about? Why are we pretending? All right, These thank people you. are unleashing mayhem on the people committing genocide crimes against humanity. All and right. they're talking about why Nigeria, one Nigeria. All why right. shouldn't their victims we were, the, we were, the victims are not being regarded as perpetrators by the terrorists are being protected. We, what, we, we will come we, back to you. Uh, before. If you don't leave, if you don't leave this program in the next 10 minutes, we will come to that section for those who would like to stay. So I wish you would stay during that uh, that um, 
session of this program to have discussed that issue very, very, very well. But meanwhile, let's round up on this particular topic of uh, Ibus in Northern Nigeria. Claiming yes, let me say something about it. Yeah. There is nothing Permission. like indigenization. There is nothing like uh, indigenous people of Nigeria. Nobody is an indigenous to Nigeria. Everybody is indigenous to his ethnicity, to his uh, people. The people in Nigeria who are being called indigenous people today are not Nigerians. They are indigenous to their own ethnic uh, background. Okay. They have their culture, they have their way of ways of life. These people have been lumped together and forced to live together. There is no way that you can force unwilling people to live together. And in okay. the process, they have tried and some people are now seeing themselves as Lord over others. All right. So how long will you be paying the price of one Nigeria with our blood? All right, we will, we will, <laughs> we will come back to you, but let's uh, listen to the last three speakers. Please just unmute yourself. Uh, Marcel, if you are still there, Dr. Lord before, uh, Pamson, let's get to our concluding topics to end this section of the program, please. Um, Marcel, there, yeah, please. Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, Dan, if you look at the history of Nigeria, we have had a multiple regions trying to secede from Nigeria. The uh, Niger Delta was the first, Adako and his team. And then the, the Northerners in the 1967 counter coup of which Buhari played a key role. The aim was to secede, but they were talked back. And then the Biafra secession that resulted into civil war, that's the third. And then now there is another quest for session. So we are looking at the fourth. And um, if you ask me, would that be the last? Yeah, I, I don't see that. So there will be more, more um, agitation for session. And the question is that if you look at each of these different quests for session, it's actually based on the fact that people are not being treated fair, fairly. There was no inclusion and diversity, which I have repeated consistently until we sort that problem out, we would always be talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. Is it, is it possible to be sorted out? Yes. It just takes the sincerity of the current leadership to come together and institute what they did before, the doctrine of necessity. If they are sincere, people can come together and work things out. That is on one angle. Now, on the other side of it, what I'm also looking at is that I called an attention to someone, I called attention to someone on the map of Nigeria recently. If you look at the entire six regions that made up Nigeria, all the regions have access to international border. All the regions have access to international border except the Southeast, which was encycled. And the question is, if you look at the creation of that, as I said, the, the military, really, the military that intervened into our leadership structure made a mess of the entire, because they are the ones that actually created this problem of bastardization and cutting around and then try to encircle around. And then, so when you hear Buhari call people a, a dot in a cycle, it's still that men mentality, that 1966 to 1967 mentality that was brought into 2021. So one thing is certain, the current constitution and the current structure that we are running has to be discarded and let people, let people come together and decide how they want to run themselves as a nation. As long as we keep having a group of people that think that by virtue of the bastardization by the military, military had given them an edge and they think every other person can be subjected under them, it is just for a while. And let me call people to, let me call people to, to, to let, let, let us get this clear. Anybody that is thinking of war in this country is, 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 is just how would I, is just making a mess of himself because the war of 1966 and 1967 is not the same thing as the war in 2021. There is no nation within the last 20 or 30 years that has ever won a war convincingly, even America, in any way, that have ever won a war in this century. At the end of the day, what happens is that everybody comes to the table, including the Taliban, look at Syria, look at Iraq, they come to the table and they negotiate. 
they talk and make peace. So I would rather that our political leadership get sense into their head, come together, let's talk and let's solve this problem out. The president has come out to say there's no restructuring. The president is just one man. He's not, he's not in his shoe to say restructuring. The National Assembly should go ahead and do, um, the National Assembly should go ahead and amend the constitution to include restructuring and devolution of power. Thank you. If the president refused to sign, to assent it, the to third majority of the National Assembly can assent it and make it law. It doesn't depend on Buhari. Buhari is just one person. So okay. I want, especially the National Assembly and the Senate, they are the people that can save this country. I need them to stand up and do the needful. But if they incline to ethnicity and tribalism and think that a zone has an upper hand, they can keep on keeping people together, they are only giving room for anarchy. All right. I Thank want you. this for my um, country, and I want them to do the needful. Dr. Lamefa, please. Dr. Lamefa, your summation. Are you still with us, uh, Pamson? Your summation. Okay, thank you very much, Dan. I have been listening keenly, and uh, my own closing remark uh, is just this simple. I really wish to stick to the subject of the discourse. Uh, indigenship is directly a function of land, and because it is a function of land. We, as Africans, have a spiritual attachment to our lands. And that is why it explains most of the situations and the dilemma we found ourselves in. Uh, the issue of Igbos here in the North is not, is not the only reference point. In living history, we recall that uh, Igbo state once some times back were issues they declared, I think they came up with a law to issue ID cards to Northerners that are living there. They, equal, they at some point, some states in the East even deport some Northerners that uh, landed there to live within that uh, geographical space. All that is because everybody wants to protect that space they call land. The same thing in the West. Uh, in, in living history, we are aware of what happened during the last election when the Yorubas want, came to a territory where that is dominated by the Igbos and felt that they want to define the trend of the voting. And even the statement of the Oba that they must go in line with what... So all these issues still is directly proportionate to land. Therefore, indigenous cannot be taken away in our uh, existence as a people and as a country. What we need is a creative solution to governance where we will have what my, my, my brother did mention there, uh, diverse, the, our diversity well taken care of and inclusion absolutely taken care of. We should be thinking of a solution, our own unique type of democracy. China is not actually a democratic uh, nation, but they are now part of the, uh, the first war. So we must think of a creative solution. For instance, can we have a, uh, by camera legislative chambers, where the first chamber is election by residency. If you are a resident anywhere, you can contest, get elected, and then you represent in that part, the constituency at that level. The second uh, chamber should be uh, strictly by traditional leaders. The tradition is a traditional council, just like the House of Lords in the U UK. That down, down uh, sometimes back, whereby the land issue, the land issues will be covered because as long as you are not covering the land issue, we are still going to have a problem. So my own solution is simple. We must start thinking of a solution that will keep us together. Whether we balkanize, we will still end up with such problems. If you are saying the present National Assembly to do the solution, it will not work. The Northwest, for instance, have 33% of the legislative uh, strength. So what are we talking about? Because of the way it is skewed, you cannot use the present uh, National Assembly to resolve anything because of the skewedness in the representation. So we are well, we are challenged by the uh, by, by by some of by our constitution. We are challenged by the way we represent ourselves or look at ourselves. 
But the truth of the matter is that we can still amend our problem and be a very strong nation representing the black race in this uh, world called uh, the art or in this art as a, uh, in this, this continent too, we are the largest black nation. We can do something that makes sense. And that is my own submission and my concluding remark because it's not possible to just create indigenization by location. It's not going to work. All right, we thank you very much. I trust all our FCC joints. Have you made your concluding comments? And Dr. Mefo, I just want to confirm before we round up. Have you made your concluding submission? Okay, okay, go ahead, sir. Sorry. Okay, please make your concluding submissions in two minutes. I think uh, we can continue going back and forth on all this without really getting any real and workable solution to the issues. Somehow we veered off from the discussion, which is uh, Northern neighbors and the question of indigenship in Nigeria. A lot of people, those who are very passionate or fanatical or very sensitive to their business interest of dividing Nigeria, which they know is not possible, but it's like uh, when somebody is doing his business, you don't, uh, he uses every opportunity to try to protect the interests of his business. The truth of the matter is that I want to insist that the most important thing, the first most important thing every one of us should do is to become Nigerians. We have to, we don't keep blaming Nigeria as if Nigeria is one thing, one abstract monster somewhere. The 200, the 200 million of us are that Nigeria we are talking about. From our individual spheres of influence, from our business areas and from whatever we do, let us try to leave that idea of Nigeria we keep talking about. For those whom God has given the talent to think, for those whom God has given or uh, circumstances have made, have, have made influential in Nigeria, they shouldn't exploit the emotions and ignorance of others. Rather, they should become the guardians of the people, to direct people's emotions better, to tell the people the truth, to enlighten the people. There is no Fulani man, the Fulani people are not immune to the bad governance we are suffering in Nigeria. Igbos are part of the problems. We have Igbo political leaders. We have had an Igbo vice president less than uh, nine years after the civil war. We have had Igbo uh, Senate presidents. We have, we have had Igbo uh, speakers. We have had Igbo deputy speakers. We have had Igbo deputy Senate presidents. We have had Igbo national chairmen of political parties. We have had Igbo IGPs. We have had Igbo uh, uh, chief of army staff. We have had Igbos in almost everywhere, apart from being the number one person in the country. We should ask ourselves, these Igbos who have been in these positions of authorities, what did they do? How did they use these positions to benefit the other Igbo man in their villages? Is, the Igbo, is it the Fulani man who stopped the councillor in your ward from using the money, voted for the development of his ward to develop his ward? Is it the Fulani man who told your governor not to pay salaries? Is it the Fulani man who told your local government chairman not to build roads even when Thank the you. money is there. Thank you. So let us stop this blame game and begin to think and work for a united and progressive Nigeria. It is possible. I believe so. That may be fantastical. That may be, that I may be being unrealistic, but I'm, I want to say I'm an incurable optimist in the Nigerian dream. All right. Thank you thinking. very much. All right. Dr. Lemme, for finally, are you, are you still here or do we round up this section? Dr. Lomefo. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. It's been a very enlightening discussion. Igbos in Northern Nigeria declaring themselves that we are now Northern Igbos and we wouldn't want the Southeast to secede from Nigeria. That is what started the discussion. We have had every set of opinion. Thank you all for being with us in this session of the program. Mazi, Mazi um, thank you very much for your presentation. 
We thank you, FCC John Somwasanya, Mr. Pamson de Giat, Mazi Uteme Four, Mohammed Ali Baba. Thank you all. It's been a pleasure to have this discussion. If you stay behind, there are very there are very sensitive issues also we would like to explore, and we will not record that session of the program, even though it may be streamed live or unless you ask us also to stop live streaming. But the recording will now stop.